Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the narrative. This is malfunction. I'm here with my special guest. Uh, if you've got, you guys probably saw me with uh, Mark Abnett a couple, probably June, maybe July, and um, and we discussed a whole lot of things. And so I talked to him about coming on and doing a proper, proper, proper interview where we just met him talking about stuff. Um, and we, I had a whole lot of technical issues and. We got around it, and I'm using a mobile phone to do this now because laptop went, and then PC went, and now I'm here. So, um, Mark, I want to start off with just telling, um, you know, asking you about who you are. Like, I mean, from you're from New Zealand, you're over there in the UK right now. Um, you've done a whole lot of stuff, and you've got a huge, you know, amazing journey to get to where you are now. Now, tell us, you know, about yourself growing up in New Zealand. How you, you know. Your background, but yeah, um, thank you very much, Aru. Um, it has been, yeah, an interesting 25 30 years. Uh, the I grew up in Hamilton and uh, Kitty Kitty Ra, uh, Hamilton born and bred, and uh, then I was um, basically in the 90s as most kids, I, you know, I grew up well, I grew up in the 80s and got the Transformers and G.I. Joe's and all that stuff. Um, comic books were not as prevalent as uh, they are now. Uh, and uh, I was watching uh, the X-Men 92 animated series and I thought, you know what, there's a, there's a comic shop in town. I might rock on along there and have a look. And uh, I went into uh, Mark One in Hamilton and uh, Chris, the owner, um, or man- he was the manager at the time. This is way back. This is about 92, 93. And, uh, he, and I said, oh, you know, it was the – you have these stereotype ideas of what a comic book shop looks like, you know, like a dungeon sort of thing, darkly dim lit and people not uh, being very helpful. But, uh, you know, it's a beautiful shop. And I, until this day, I, I think it's one of the best comic sh- shops in the world. Um, it, it's well lit, well set out. The staff are absolutely lovely. Uh, and they, they bend over backwards for you. And, you know, here was me, little old me, I think it was about 12 or 13, and uh, wandered in there and um, saw on the shelf. What year was um, it? Uh, I think about 93 or 94. It was So it was two or three months before Age of Apocalypse started because I, I was into okay. my X-Men, and, and then um, I was into my X-Men, and, and the first book I saw on the shelf was uh, Cable number 20, no, number 19. Yeah, Cable number 19, mm. which is here somewhere well, that's gonna, behind me. So... <laughs> <laughs> Which was the first comic you picked up when you go into the shop? Was it, was, it Cable yeah, de- or was it something else? Definitely, definitely Cable 19 because um, yeah, even in uh, the animated series, he was still a bit of a mysterious guy. You didn't really know too much about him. And, um, you know, there was no internet those days. You couldn't really um, no. you couldn't really Google who these guys were and what they were. And the only way yeah. you could find out who they were was through back issues. So it had Cable who yeah. was um, – it was a white white cover, and there was a powerful guy in an apocalypse type suit standing over him, and Cable's on the ground. But Cable had a, like an X Men costume on, which I hadn't seen before. So he had the gold, gold is, and yellow, is that the and blue. What's that? Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm just trying I, to I, figure I, out where is it. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out um, because that's the year. Like that's when I stopped. That's when I stopped, uh, like I moved back up to Sangare and I didn't have um, uh, access to comic books at uh, all. So I wasn't buying anything at that point. Oh, so I can't is. imagine oh, a, a number. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the one there. Yeah. And I was like, it was quite, you know, this was quite striking for me. I was like, oh, okay, that's really, yeah. first of all, didn't recognize Cable wearing an X-Men uniform before. Didn't know who this guy was. And yeah, it's part but of not Cable the, using red? Like he's got a no. red suit? No. No, I uh, never had a red suit. Oh, I'm thinking of Colossus. Damn it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could take you so, all over that so later. This, <laughs> so, this is 94. And 93, 94. X, X Men Animated has come out. Now, tell, now I'm a huge uh, anime fan, and um, yeah. I watch it every day. It's like, yeah. it's just every day. I go through series, 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 series. Uh, new ones at the moment. I'm watching one called uh, Dororo, yep. uh, and it's amazing. Yep. You know, I uh, is that, is there's that something the one, about 
is that the one the guy looks like a crocodile sort of he's got green skin on him? No, no. Green... I think okay. it's Dora Dora Dora. Okay. Close. Yeah, this, one, this, this is a kind of a yeah, that is pretty cool. Like he chops off, you know, tries to find his face again. Yeah, I've seen that, and that's on Netflix, isn't it? So yeah. like Dororo, yeah. like I mean for me, I just love to be able to have something playing while I'm working. And, you know, and because I'm multitasking all the time, my brain works on that level. But the cool thing about the anime, X-Men animator, there's a whole interview done by Eric De July on his, uh, on his channel on YouTube where he talks to the, to the showrunners and the writers of the show. Hmm. And it's, it's a brilliant. I've, I've shared it on here on Comic Trade page, uh, on our Facebook page. But he talks to the, the uh, husband and wife team and about mm-hmm. how they try to get it made, you know, yep. and why they, how, what, how much stuff they went through to try to get it made, to get it passed, to get it to that. Yep. And they said they never, they never wrote their stories down. You know, they never wrote down. So they wrote it just, this is it, these are the characters, this is what their stories are. They didn't try to dumb it down for, a, like, say, a five-year-old, something like that. And so if, even if you were, like, a five-year-old, you got it. Even if you're forty yeah. year old, you got an eighty year old thing, you got it. And yeah. so why did yeah, what was it for you for um, for this show? I mean for the so series. Because I mean it's one of my favorites as well. Yeah, the the biggest difference about it and at the same time you had gargoyles uh, out as well. Um, oh, it yeah. had it had yeah. continuous season long storytelling. Uh, which which they yeah. kind of mucked up in the States because you, it used to be everything was very uh, episodic, one episode, one and done. That was pretty much what most cartoons back then did they might have a two-parter or a three-parter but this time um and we were i think we were lucky in new zealand because they actually came out in order but in the states they didn't come out in order so you it it would go part one then part three then part two then part six it was all over the place the the order and that's because they just the fox who was um Fox Kids, who were uh, broadcasting in the states, right. they it was never an issue for them before. They never had to think about it that that these things yep. had to be done in order. Um, and it was the episodic nature of the storytelling that was interesting. And they essentially they did a lot with a little, and uh, they always yep. they always dropped hints at stuff and hinted at something bigger between a relationship for, between one character and another. They never got round to yep. you know there was. Um, I think uh, Cable's appearance, uh, his his computer professor is telling him uh, about the X-Men and he, he's going through a profile one by one and the professor mm-hmm. gets to Cyclops and, Je- Cyclops and Cable says, I know all about Cyclops and Jean Grey. Who else is there? And it's like, oh, he knows about them. What's yeah. that about? You know, yeah. and that, that was, he's actually the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Uh, but that was never, yeah. that was, that was never fleshed out in the TV series, but there was a lot of stuff that was very, they didn't change too much from the original um, books and stories. You know, it was their own version of it. No, no, not that one. uh, Yeah. It would have been for all the mutants Uh, or the, Mm. the, yeah, the one where um, the, the, well, technically they don't call it the legacy virus, but apocalypse puts a virus. And uh, he makes sure Wolverine gets a virus because then there's cures and antibodies for it. So that's how they stop that. Um, but, yeah, it was first sort of saying, oh, okay, that's interesting. I thought, you know what? Yeah, and went into the comic book shop, and they were so helpful. And because, as I said, there was no internet, I started off on part three of a three-part story. So I had to go back the next week <laughs> and then get the, the issues yeah. before. And then next thing yeah. you know, I've – and this is – and in the back of the comic books, you you see these ads for um, comic book warehouses. So I went yeah. and found out every appearance that Cable was in. And I, th- I think I saved up my paper run money. And I had yeah. to go to the post office and get a money order made, which is sort of like a check, and sent the mm-hmm. whole thing off to the States based on, at that time, the assumed ca- conversion rate of cash. <laughs> Yeah. So and and ordered all my comics from Mile High Comics in America, and about three months later, about fifty comic books turned up. So wow. and and you know, it's funny when you the monthly grind of comics these days. 
you know, I barely remember yeah. what happened last year in a series, but this was at a time I was go- I was trying to every month, every issue was felt so big yeah. and so massive. There was so much in there. Yeah. Now I can read a comic and I just blink and I'm like, oh, what did I just read, sort of thing. But the um, yeah. they that, they were that's um, the story, isn't it? I mean, like yeah, that really did the story. I mean, talking about that experience. So, like, I was in like in Auckland around about. Gosh, when I was 17, so yeah. this is back in about, oh man, let me see, probably about eight, um, 80, 87, something like that, 86, 87. Yeah. And, um, and somehow I got, to, um, I got, uh, encur- somehow I was turned on to X Men. Out of the mm-hmm. blue, I don't have any memory of how it happened, um, but I I do remember like I, all my life was like 2000 AD, like weekly, yep. weekly, monthly book, you know, for about maybe about at least ten years prior to that. So of that, and so somehow I got on turned into um, X Men, and then there was a, then I was looking around. Somehow I found out Heroes for Heroes for I think it was was it Heroes for Sale in downtown or something like that, and the underground store. Oh, it might Sounds be Mark right. One. I think it was Mark One. Yeah. So I would go in there every week with 60, 50 bucks in my pocket every week and come home with a pile of comics this big. Like now you can't do that. Right. <laughs> you, 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 I mean, like you just couldn't. But the thing was that I would just come back with a brown bag and I'll get my um, bag and board. They're, all, they're always coming a bag and board because I've got put them in there right now. I'm not because I've got to get on the bus and go home. And then I'd spend a whole weekend. No, I'd probably go home on that Friday night up because my paycheck came in. I'd go Friday night, spend all night reading. Saturday, I would go around drinking with my mate, workmates and stuff. And then Sunday, come back and just carry on reading. And then the week for the next week. So I was on weekly. So I ended up with like maybe X-Men, Excalibur, um, you know, when the both the X-Men books came out, you know, yeah. at the time with 91. And then you had uh, New Mutants had come out. Yeah. You'd have, um, gosh. Uh, Alpha Fly, anything with mutant was in there, I would be getting it. I was yeah. not into Batman. I was not into anything else. No X Avengers or anything. I just mutant. That's why I like the you know the whole thing. That's where you started as well. And I think yeah. that whole. Um, well, the what, thing about them, they, they 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 weren't what? just superheroes. They dressed up and you know they didn't really have capes and tights or anything. But they were they, yeah. there was a struggle and there was a struggle for identity and there was a struggle um for wanting to belong and you know with a lot, a lot of kids you know that that identifies yeah. with young young kids you know you're going through your, your teenage years and and you know <laughs> you, you want yeah. to belong and, and then you know it's a it's a, a mutants in particular a good we're a group that uh people uh you know have been discriminated against or people with disabilities people with um you know um, had been um, abused. You know, people gravitated towards them because they were always struggling and and, and being put down, yeah. but they kept fighting through. And you know, it wasn't and that sort of, it wasn't that's like a cool sort of uh, concept, wasn't it? I mean, that's an amazing yeah. concept. I mean, it's been around since '63, if I remember right. Yeah. The X-Men's been around for '63, and yet here we are in the '80s and '90s. You know, reading this. Um, um, I guess this up. I, I, I mean, it evolved, right? They just yeah. evolved over time with all these writers. Now, was it was it Claremont series that you that was that, or was it just after for you? What was what? Sorry, was it the Claremont and Byrne series that brought oh, you right. into that? Because it was, no, 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 or was it, it just before? No, no, no. It was after that. It was uh, just after the Image guys had left. So this is just after, just just before uh, Age of Apocalypse. So um, you know, that's so the right all, on the cable yeah. one. I mean, yeah, that's so, the right on cable one. So that's oh, where they Jeff, got you into Jeff it. Loeb. Jeff Loeb. Jeff uh, Loeb was Fabian Nic- Nicolaza, yeah. and then Jeff Loeb came along, yeah. uh, who was in charge of um, Marvel TV. Um. But Loeb is uh, at this point. Jeff Loeb had re- he wrote <laughs> Commando, the movie <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I think he had right. something to do with Team Team Wolf Two and stuff like that. And uh, he ended up 
writing, I think Cable was the first book he wrote. And this is when they were selling 100,000 copies a month sort of thing. This is around the speculator yeah. boom. When Im Image is just taking right. off. You're looking at about, yeah, about a year of uh, Spawn and, and stuff like that. And uh, Liefeld's drawing 100 different books and not getting past issue two on them. Um, and, yeah. yeah. And and the art here is uh, in here is actually Steve Scrose or Scorsese or Scrose, who a uh, Canadian artist who ended up doing all with Jeff Darrow did all the um, oh all the animatics and all the uh, oh come on all uh, for the Matrix guys the Wiskowski Wiskowski the Matrix Wiskowski guys brothers. slash well sisters now yeah, yeah. so. Um, yeah, so he he ended up doing all the uh, animatics and all the previs stuff. It's hmm. no, it's not that. That's not storyboarding. There we go. So yeah, yeah. Um, and here's me starting to collect, and then I go back in the shop a month later, and then I pick up the comic, and it's like all the X Men comics are cancelled. I'm like fucking what? I just, I just started. I've just gone down this road because they literally said, it's, you know, you pick up the and it says we're cancelling everything. And because it was a four month event, this is the first time anything like this had happened because these are the days where yeah. you didn't reboot or start at number one with a new writer artist team or anything like that. You know, you were in, I think it was like X Men 320 and then um, or Uncanny 320. Every, every other book was in their 70s or 80s and we we're going to cancel all of them and it's going to be the age of apocalypse. And it was like, what the fudge is happening? You know, yeah. and it was crazy. And even the comic book guys, the Chris, they didn't know what was going on as well because it was a four month event and they only get to see three months out. So yeah, it was, it was absolutely wild. So instead of buying one or two books, I just bought tons of every, everything X for two or three months and it was absolutely crazy mm -hmm. seeing these new interpretations but the the good thing about it is you you would know everything about them from the get-go i was felt in yeah. on the ground level and i didn't have to yeah. buy back issues to research why this happened and this happened and this happened again no internet <laughs> so but yeah. I, I i as a kid knew as much as this other guy because we're all reading along at the same time so as far as it it was a brilliant marketing stunt the age of apocalypse and yeah. um you know and it sold a truckload of books and a lot of people have very fond memories for it because it was mm. around that 92 x-men light time and it was a time mm. when it was the only way to get in and have a level level playing field of knowledge and yeah and going back probably not the best books in the world rereading some of them but some of the art and them yeah. is absolutely brilliant you know um you know you, you joe yeah, made your yeah yeah i but, think i was um, still in auckland that time and um i I'd, I'd come back around about late late 93 so uh, yeah i think i do remember that but it wasn't that fondness of that you know the memory probably of not, it hey this no. is, yeah. <laughs> Well, not not as much as I remember um, the Dark Phoenix saga and uh, mm. Genosha because Genosha was one of my favorite. It was just a whole, you know, uh, gosh. There's extinction Jubilee agenda. And, and yeah, yeah, that was that's one of my favorite. Um, probably, yeah, that would be my favorite storyline actually. If I really yeah. think about it, then would come with them. Yeah. Um, uh, that was, that was probably the saga. first time, apart, you know, they had crossovers like Inferno and Fall of the Mutants and stuff, but they weren't mm. tight. And uh, Extension yeah. Agenda was the first tight crossover where you could go from issue to issue and it'd be a cohesive mm. storytelling experience. And yeah. also at the time, you didn't have trade paperbacks or hardcovers. There were very, very few yeah. things to pick up. But I, I mean, I think I've got, what have we got here? Can I even open that? What have I got? Yeah. So I did pick up like fate, Fatal Attractions at a paperback. I think it might even have the yep. price, New Zealand price on it. And then Execution is yep. Song. You know, because, and the prices for these things were horrific and they probably still are. But I remember <laughs> pay, paying an insane just, amount at the time because was you know, like it was 30, 30 bucks or something. Oh, oh here we can get one of those. That. So this yep. is, it's got, tw I think this one would it was twenty five mm -hmm. US. It would have been about sixty New Zealand at the yeah. time, and you know, you're twelve year old, sixty bucks. That was a lot, kids. <laughs> and you know, yeah, I've got, I was like, that's half my weight. 
<laughs> me being a double dipper that I am, I've got all the omnibuses and hardcovers and <laughs> as well. But yeah, these things I, I was reread these to death and treat them like absolute freaking Bibles, you know. Um, yeah. But that's the but thing about, it... about the thing when they put these out, isn't it? That like, I mean, like I was just holding this one up because this is from the library. I just saw this in the library um, this, um, the other day. I was there on Wednesday yeah. and grabbed it. I mean, I haven't read this for years. And I was looking, um, you know, because they made a movie out of it with um, Wolverine going back in time in the 70s. And, yeah. um, but you look at some of the artwork, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's just superb artwork. And, you yeah. know, from... From the details and stuff, and yeah. just how they arrange stuff, and you know, I uh, I mean, it's it's memorable. It's, um, like the storytelling is so memorable that like we can reflect on it. But it's not like the reflection that um, you know, nostalgia thing. It's not nostalgia at all mm -hmm. because you actually realize that they were great books and um, oh, good absolutely. writing. That, yeah, and uh, and that, what you've that, got. With, with the right writing, Clement was uh, Chris Clement was real, really different for the time because uh, yeah. he was very uh, evocative and uh, a lot of it, he piled on the words, <laughs> and um, yeah, a, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, caption boxes and uh, a lot of thought yeah, bubbles. I think and like that. and uh, yeah. he, I don't think anyone is as heavy handed as he is these days, but at the time. You know that was it was a big change, and it was kind yeah. of a blessing to some of the artists as well because you know you're asking when you're asked to draw a team book, you know you're talking about seven or eight different characters, and then there you got the enemies as well. So it's easier to do a book based on one character than it is to, for multiple characters for most artists. And these guys they were workhorses; they they didn't have things like the internet that to just distract them or cell phones or Digital. email or anything like that. Or, they were, you know, they'd get yeah. up at seven thirty and work right through into the night just to get the pages done. Yeah. You know, and you, you see absolute masters of their craft. And I'm not saying guys today aren't, but no, and you you know I mean, like, they, the, the, they, the discipline that they had. And yeah. uh, they, they just, they, you know, they churned out some really, really great work. Um, mm. And uh, Clement came back uh, in the early 2000s to, to Marvel and um, the X stuff. And it wasn't quite the same as it was. So they gave him his own book, yeah. Extreme X-Men. And that's when mm. uh, Salvador Oroca, uh, he was doing color. They did colors over his pencils. And it looked, it looked a really good yeah. looking book, but Clement, being Clement, kind of <laughs> the way he always worked was he was he would always drop in hints and and teasers at something else, and a lot of the time he wouldn't come back to it. <laughs> so the the series for the first 15, 20 issues is pretty solid, and then it starts losing its structure because things haven't that it set up haven't developed. You've got a new artist in there. And just kind of lost steam. Whereas uh, yeah. now most stories and most arcs are pretty much made for trade. So you get three issue to six issue storylines. Yeah. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either because you've got to think mm. every comic book could be someone's first. And if they can't pick up that yeah. book and, and have a decent sense of what's going on, if they have to go online and, and figure it all out, you're missing a trick there. You probably haven't done your job as a writer or, or an artist. And whilst it's annoying to old fogies like you and me, it's like, I know all this shit. Well, I just I mean, want to get on with it. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it, a, it is, it's it's like a it's Batman an, book, isn't it? Yeah. It's like so a imagine, Batman book because you, you're like, they tell you Batman's death over and over in every single um, new arc. It's like, this guy's been around for 80 years. I'm sure any kid who knows, you know, who's seen anything, you know, who's on yeah. Batman knows that's, his, that, that's Listen, who Batman uh, is. Uh, thing, I, if I, if I see his different. mum and dad get killed in a movie again, I'll just pull my hair out, you know. Oh. That's probably the, one of the best things about the Spider-Man movies is they never show the new last two Spider-Man movies. They never showed the Uncle Ben getting killed thing. It's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> we know we know that. But they did you run... Know? But they did ruin Spider-Man, though. He's like a sidekick in his, you know, in his own friggin' thing. But like, uh, hey, um, it'll change. About, uh, it'll change. <laughs> hopefully. So, like, I mean, you look at um, like, 
uh, Superman, we know where Superman came from, so we don't need to have another 10,000 stories telling us where Superman came from and how he arrived on Earth. But you're talking about Jeff Lowe. I'm going to head back to that. Uh, now, I hope my memory serves me right. Did Jeff Loeb do the long Halloween? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. So yeah, so yep. him, so him and Tim, Tim Sale did a lot. Yeah, I watched. I just yeah. watching the animated one the other day. Yeah. What did you think so about that? I think it's an anime. Sort of, I'm, I'm uh, it's an animation. They are trying. It's very hard to emulate Tim Sale's art style because it's a hmm. painted style. And they were trying to find a middle ground between something that works in animation and something that works on uh, that, that reflects what the book and the mood and the tone was like. I don't think they got it quite right. I and mean, it's an impossible task unless you have Tim Sale animate the whole yeah. thing himself, you know, because he's very stylized and, you know, the, uses the shadows and the darks really well and, um, and, you know, the negative space and stuff like that. Absolutely brilliant. It sets a whole, yeah. uh, it elevates the book, the art, the, a mm. million percent. It's not a book that you could chuck another artist on. So when you try and transfer that to the screen, it's it's not easy. So it, it, it was in a place where it felt a little bit like the traditional Batman animated, as in, you know, you don't see Gotham in the light sort of thing. It's fairly dark, but even yeah. then, the animated series is probably darker. Um, yeah, the the voice cast, it is something about the pacing in it that just didn't work for me. I think it's still a good adaption. Mm. Um, I don't think splitting into two parts because it is a long story that was interesting. Uh, but the um, it, I'm glad it was adapted. I'm glad new people can see it. But I would prefer yeah. the book any day. Yeah, the book the book yeah. is is far superior to the animated thing, and that's the thing you can't um, any any comic book should be written as and primarily as a comic. Uh, there's been a lot of instances in the last uh, fifteen to twenty years where you have these guys um, who have created comics as pitches for movies and TV series and stuff, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. It's got to be a comic. It's got to be a comic first and foremost. It's got to adhere to you know comic style structure and pacing if you try and make it a tv or a, you know it's like hollywood people coming in and doing certain things if you try and make it a movie pitch or something it'll never it will never work now the most interesting thing recently is probably keanu reeves on kickstarter and his berserker project now the difference that was hugely successful the difference mm. behind that is he did have Ron Garney, the artist, and can't remember the writer's name, but those are professional comic and comic people. So mm. whilst this berserker, basically, a, he's a Highlander, but he's a military man. That's yeah. that's all it is. Um, yeah. They, they have is definitely being used to pitch a TV or movie thing. And, uh, oh, yeah. Being, yeah. And, I mean, there but, was a whole... There but was they a whole do have... It they do have mm. the right comic people behind it. So first and foremost, those guys will make a great book. So, and it's, I haven't read it yet, but uh, from the sounds of it, it's not bad, you know, but again, it's, it's just Highlander with guns. So, or the old guard. I which, think I've got a know, copy guns. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I bought a copy somewhere from um, New Zealand Comics and Collectibles, a website. Some guy, Somebody was doing, um, an, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, a sale thing going on, and I bought a copy somewhere. It's up on the rack, uh, on the shelf there. But it was, I mean, it, it, it was meant to be a movie. It was done to, uh, you know, make money to get the yep. movie in motion. You got yep. your storyboards all set up. You, you know, the, probably, you know, the entire pitch, everything is all done. All you got to go is, so what's it about? Yeah. That's it. You know, so, so when you go to, you go, well, what's you know, it is. It has generated uh, good word of mouth and buzz as well. So that's the other mm. thing that. So you see when when comic stuff is usually picked up for adaptation by Netflix or whoever, it's because the storylines have good word of mouth and buzz. Sweet Tooth recently filmed in New Zealand. Um, yeah. Why the Last mm. Man is coming out. It was first trailer for that dropped yesterday or today. Uh, it's, mm. it's, it, was, it was about eight. 8.30 a.m. in, uh, in Scotland. Yeah. So, yeah, you might uh, – yeah, during 
last night. I heard about it uh, on, on yeah. Yeah, I heard about it. Somebody talking about it on YouTube, um, you know, um, gosh, on YouTube. But like, I don't even, you know, it's not something I want to. I want to see anymore. Like I don't want to see any more adaptations of comic books anymore. I'm, I've exactly. got I've, I've got the whole pile of why they spent from number one yeah. to seventy five. It is, you know. I, I think the first six is a trade paperback when I bought it because I missed out. So retroactively yeah. bought the entire lot from somebody here on, on Trade Me. This is like about maybe seven eight years ago, yeah. or I don't know maybe about hundred bucks or something for the entire lot. But um, I think. The story is great. I mean, the story, yeah. the concept, everything yeah. about it is great. I don't trust Netflix <laughs> with anything like that. I don't trust anybody anymore with any uh, comic book titles anymore, mm. unless you know, um, because well, unless the creators just, are involved. Just, yeah. Or even with the creator involved, uh, there's one creator that I have a with, uh, tip with. Even with the creator involved, because you're selling. You're trying to sell a product to a company that is wanting to make more products off it. So at the end of the day, they have the idea of what they want to do in their mind. Yeah. I mean, like I work for, you know, I work, I'm a company, I work for other company, whatever, you know, so I just, you know, I get an idea of what I'm trying to do all the time. I'm trying to sell a product. That's the best product I could put out, but, but I'm a creator as well. So the creative part of me goes, work hard, make sure this is good, make sure this is good. Make sure it's palatable. And then, you know, it's, that's something we're going to talk about later on. But when it comes to these guys, I don't trust them anymore. Like, I mean, I love, uh, I love the boys. I have, you know, I have, you know, Funko yeah. toys. I have the whole series. I have issues signed and drawn, hard covers, you know, uh, drawn by Derek, um, mm. sketch with, by yeah. Derek Ross. But I will never watch it. I've just, yeah. like, I just, when they came out, I was like, never going to watch this. Ever, I'm done. It's, it is, yeah, it's a, it's so a different thinking, experience from the books. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the, the thing is, then you're trying to make it pal palatable to people who've never heard of the characters, where you've spent yes. like decades involved with these characters. And then, you know, and I understand the TV side of it because, I, you know, I've got a film degree. So I've, I've learned how to, I mean, learn how, how the whole that system works of trying to work yeah. this. But I still kind of go, well, it's a comic. I want to be in my head. I want to escape. I don't want you to tell me what it should be, you know, mm -hmm. what these characters should be doing. I know what these characters are because I've looked at them for so many years. And I think why, why, is, why is an amazing, amazing story on its yeah. own, you know, and it's yeah. perfect. I think the biggest challenge and, and what we're not really seeing, uh, but we did a bit with, you know, the, let's talk about The Walking Dead for a bit, that is not translated as well, I believe, as the book is. But what it resulted in, and the Invincible TV series and uh, even Sweet Tooth, has been people going into comic shops or going online and buying yeah. the books. So yeah. if it's a good... I, I, I'm fully for all these things being great launch pads to get, get people to, into reading comics. One thing that's really yeah. disappointing about Disney... Um, is they've got a great opportunity with Disney Plus to just point people towards a comic book shop or the end of every movie just say, pick up the Fever Adventures yeah. here or pick up this here. And they don't do it. What was really interesting with the last, yeah. the, with Modoc, the uh, robot chicken guys who made that, uh, the stop motion Modoc series, um, which was on Hulu in the States and then Disney Plus everywhere in the world. I, I don't know if it was on Disney Plus in New Zealand, but. Um, uh, I, I liked it. Some, some people hated it. I thought it was quite funny. But at the end of every episode oh, in, in, in the States on Hulu, which mm. is uh, another streaming network, um, for, at the end of every episode in the States, they, they said if you, there was a title card that came up and it said if you want to see more MODOK, go, go, go to your local comic shop or go online and buy MODOK Head Games, written by the creators of the show. Mm. And I was like, mm. that's brilliant. But they didn't, for some reason, they cut that out of Disney Plus globally. And I don't understand. Yeah. It's, you know, this is, this is a company. It's this like is all about. Up in the foot. Yeah, you're put, leaving money on the table. And, yeah. and it's, a, it's a really yeah. frustrating thing. Now, I know, mm. I know Captain America in the comic book isn't the same as, as, as Captain America in the movies, but there's plenty of standalone books there that have the same... 
you don't have to get into the ongoing run, but there are plenty of great standalone arcs that you right. know have the same um, deliver the same emotions and the same feelings uh, yeah. that the, the I mean, TV does. This guy's been around for, for decades. Yeah, it's it's frustrating that they they, they don't seem to be and DC are the same. You know, it's, it's frustrating they don't seem to actively be driving people to comic book shops. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, that would be a ca- if I had heaven forbid I would do ever do anything that would be a caveat for me that there must have a tag yeah. in there somewhere. And for I, I don't know, I thought it might have been some Hollywood Guild issue. You know, like they say that the producers must be in this order and the credits and all that bullshit. I thought it was something like that. Yeah. But no, they can do that if they wanted to. They can oh, say for it's more information. Three second, four seconds. Yeah, even I mean, if it's, it's right, right when People, yeah. people are sitting in there waiting for the um, post-credit and teasers credit, and yeah, stuff like that. It's like, that's a perfect time to just say, hey, go to your local shop. Go to comicbookshop.com or, you know, or heaven forbid, go to Marvel Unlimited if you wanted to read more about this. And yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a shame. Um, I, I think but, I mean, that's why you, there will be changes. That's why I, think that, I think that's why, like, you had, uh, what is it, like a decade? A decade of Marvel franchises ruling the cinema, mm. and a decade of where the comic book stores went downhill. You know, so uh, it's like you. It's it's, it's kind interesting. of interesting. Like, that's a that's an interesting yeah. one. So I know a lot of comic book store owners have done pretty well in the last ten years, and a lot of that has mm. to do with their ability to actually be good business people. Um, there's a lot of uh, as a, a go again Chris Smart one in New Zealand like mm. that shop is amazing it looks yeah. brilliant it's laid out clean and tidily everything's accessible there it's not a big room full of long boxes and a dark shelves and a, and a dungeon you know it's it's a store yeah. that people want to go into and the same thing so you know the last 10 years i've been all over the uk and you know when we've gone on holidays around the world i've always tried to make sure i go into comic book shops all around the world mm. and the successful ones are ones that are very customer focused they yeah. have multiple income streams so it's not just comic mm. books it's also yeah it's you know, and it's not just Funko Pops as well because some people can get tied up in too yeah. many of them. Um, it's you know, it's your Dungeons and Dragons, which bring in huge money. Warhammer brings in huge money. Um, and, and some yeah. places are even have a coffee shop or a reading corner or something like that. Coffee, man, there's huge margin in coffee. Anyone that, yeah. and that's not just an indictment on comic book shops. Any store that can have a multiple revenue income stream in the last 10, 15 years from the global recession to the last two years with COVID up here, man, it's there. I won't go down that rabbit hole. You guys don't know how lucky you are. Yeah. Let's just stay away from it. I've been trying to stay away from it myself. You have no idea. And, you know, we've we've basically been in lockdown for a year and a half and so much as you guys are basically two weeks. So people in New Zealand who kick off about COVID, yeah. don't you're doing better than everyone else? It could be better. I know, but you're doing know. better than everyone else. But um, yeah, I'm know. very um, appreciative of what we're doing. So that's why I stay yeah. away from it when I when we do this. Uh, so yeah. um, let me see what we're saying. Like, so I used to own a comic store, right? Okay. So back in 2014, 2015. So I I was like researching all the good stores in the world. That was yeah. my first stop. It was like yeah. Which ones are successful? What, what are they offering? And the most successful one was in Australia. Like the most. M- was that Minotaur one, or A1? A- I, 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 no, I can't remember what the name was, but like it was at that time, this is 2014, it was like the most successful one in the world. And it wasn't in America. You know, the whole yeah. thing was the laughable thing was it wasn't in America, the home of the co- yeah. superhero comic books, right? And so I was like, this is, I, I went through my. Tick box, okay, what do I need? What do I need? What do I need? First thing, it has to smell nice. It has to be well lit. Yep. Yep. It has to be able to allow females to, and young kids to come in and be, uh, be they're, able they're, to they're come more, in. They are more than 50% yeah. of the market. You know? Yep. If, they, you know. Uh, if I can get females and uh, young kids to come in and parents at the same time to be able to mm-hmm. come in and feel uh, comfortable in there, 
And, um, you know, because I, just like you, I've been all over comic shops in New Zealand and it was always the same. So, you know, I, I need to have this, I need to have this. And so, you know, I had, I had that one-stop shop, but one thing I didn't do smartly was to move into manga really quickly. This was like, in, you know, six seven years ago. And if Huge. I had, if I had, if I had, because what had happened, I'd run out of money by the time I got into that. And then... I wasn't able yeah. to turn around and I had it is, it is, set up. And that, yeah, that was absolutely. Failure. Totally so, understand. It's very but, cash up front heavy business. It's, yeah, yeah that's a really hard one. It hurt a lot of these companies, I yeah. mean, these businesses because of cash up front. Mm. And, um, and you're right, because the, um, the, the two big two that everybody recognizes are the most iconic characters in the world, mm. they couldn't, they didn't allow, um, you know, the stores that they, they put their product in. To be mm. to be successful on the back end of those for the last ten years, and yeah, sure, some have succeeded because of what they've done, and I've actually told people to do some of the things that I hadn't done so they could mm. become successful, and yeah. some haven't listened, right? Yeah. And some, you know, are yeah. we're more aware. But it's, so, it's, it's, the, business is business at the end of the day, right? You're trying to make a you're trying to make an income, and if you're doing it in comics, you have to diversify. Yeah. Um, there's the margins in monthly comics and the risks you take with stock sitting there is incredible, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then everyone expects your Wednesday or Thursday, Thursday in New Zealand. But, yeah, everyone, it's amazing mm -hmm. actually at the end of the day how quickly New Zealand gets their comics compared to the rest of the world because, you know, you, you can only be shut it off. At, uh, your, your Wednesday warriors, your, you, you know, you go in there and you pick up your books for the week yeah. and – with everything being online now, you, you can't. You used to be able to just sit back and ignore stuff, but now, like you want yeah. it the day it comes out, and blah blah blah. And if you've, let's say, you've ordered twenty copies of Justice League One and you only sell five of them, you know that's yeah, you, you're fucked. You, you're stuffed, and you have to sell it for you well, know pretty much. You lose well, money and sell it off. Yeah, and the so other the, end is the people that ordered yeah, the, decide they somehow they're not able to buy it. Now you're stuck with ordered stuff especially for, yeah. for other people that's yeah. sitting on the shelf that you can't yeah. move because nobody else is reading that except those and people that were reading that. Yeah, and if you're starting as a business, you can't really operate as pre-ordering, you know. I, I ended up doing that with yeah. Chris and Mark when I got the point where um, I would just uh, say, right, I'm going to buy the next 12 issues of this. Here's 60 bucks. <laughs> just, yeah, I'm paid up for the year, so I don't have to worry about right. it. But uh, I don't think he actually did that with too many people because I mean, obviously between New Zealand yeah. and the uh, US, the price fluctuations are all over the place with exchange rates and stuff like that. So it's very tricky to do. Um, right. But you, when you talk when you talk about manga, you're absolutely right. Every pretty much comic shop in the world right now is struggling to keep their shelf full of manga. Now that's a combination of a couple of things. Uh, the world shipping's gone to pot. Um, you know, things that would cost uh, three thousand to send a container over is about twelve thousand to send a container. Uh, yeah, it's mm. air freight's actually going to end up working out cheaper than um, uh, shipping stuff at the moment. And so you've got a lot of, with COVID and with the Suez Canal blockage, you've got a lot of containers sitting empty all around the world that haven't been picked up. The whole delivery and transportation flow is just awful. So you're seeing big delays in a lot of uh, hardcover books um, and a lot of uh, paperback books that are printed out pretty cheaper. In the main, a lot of manga. Yeah. It's printed out very cheaply in China and then shipped all over the world, tripped to Japan and then shipped out again. So most, yeah. and with all the, the very, you know, uh, uh, except for New Zealand, most places around the world have had very long lockdowns and there's been a huge increase in spending mm. on nostalgia, uh, stuff people grew up with, stuff that, you know, you're familiar with and happy with. Um you know, and and kids themselves have been discovering. You know, they've discovered all these Netflix anime series and and uh, based on the book. And then they've been trying to get the book from comic shops, yep. and the shelves are empty. So you know, yeah, it, it, that sort of thing's working. Uh, but yeah, they, it, it's amazing how the explosion of manga is. Uh, my mate, um, one Dr. of the Hebrew, reasons I think one. One of the things um, I think the re and this is my um, one of my things with um, with the big two, and even the you know like the other uh, other um, the top five is because a comic industry um, company manga does your five volumes or so or twelve volumes, which it takes about two years I guess uh, because they come out on a you know on a weekly basis oh. chapter per week. 
so and the show to jump and all the other uh, collector series. Now, then they put the volumes out, and they built in weekly things like they used to do with 2000 AD, right? With the periodical, yeah. whatever, uh, monthly, uh, weekly books. So they come out, and then at the end of I, I guess a, several weeks or whatever, they come to put the um, the volumes together, 170 books, 170 pages or something. And if it's, if it's a successful one, they get into the anim, animated series, right? The anime mm-hmm. version of it. Now, the anime now is the is the promotion and uh, the the marketing tool for the ma- manga. So the, yes. so so you've got that. So you got to advert a commercial for the manga. Now that's going to keep going for another 12, 24 volumes, and it's going to complete one of the such. The writer decides what well, this is how going to complete, and all oh, it's going to go on for one piece like a thousand cops, you know, a thousand volumes. Now, or oh, episodes. Now, back in the day, we were talking about X Men, right? You had the series, ongoing animated series based on the and Uncanny X Men series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've yep. also I just pulled up, um, you know, Fantastic Four here. Uh, yeah. There was Spider Man over there yeah. somewhere. Yep. Uh, there's Mask. There was, um, um, oh gosh, Silver Surfer, um, Batman, Robin, the whole shebang. Did I lose you? Yep, I think I've just lost. Um, I've lost Mark. So we'll carry on. So. They had all these other different um, shows, uh, uh, cartoon shows. Here we go. No idea what Lost happened. It for a bit. No idea what yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. So through the but 80s yeah, they, and 90s, they, they, you had all, all these different shows, G.I. Joe, uh, Mask, uh, M-A-S-X, yep, yep. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. K, yep. T-Man, <laughs> um, yeah, Avengers. All the 80s stuff. Yep. All the 80s stuff, 90s stuff. Now, you get to 2000, you get to 2010, you get to 2020, don't know what happened, and the balls dropped. Like, they, the, well, the, the big two. There is, there is some the ball. stuff oh, out there. Also, there, there was Spawn stuff. as well. There was also Spawn. I forgot to mention oh, yeah, Spawn. Yeah. That, well, that, was, a, that yeah. was an adult, adult series on MTV, the Spawn. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. And so they had all this. Now, now they basically don't do that they've got, like you would think like they've got like this entire story art they could mm. just go bang here it is we've got them yeah. all these animated companies ready to go last year they said you know they said on the on the back sides and didn't do nothing with it um i mm. guess that's where invincible came out of from image right yep. because of course robert kirkland's name's involved so of course he could do that but i don't see and this is the fault that i see in um you know the big two of not taking their good for um, any, you know, all their past mm-hmm. um, great story art by great writers and just turning it. I mean, they could have a Hell, Hell, Hellraiser, uh, sorry, Hellblazer, John Constantine TV yeah. uh, animated series from, you yeah. they've got 300 issues. They had yeah. a movie, they could have just turned it up, boom, straight away, and Keanu Reeves involved, was a good, except the movie. Of course, he wasn't, it wasn't, Blonde wasn't British. Well, okay. wasn't British. Like, wasn't Chicago. British. <laughs> wasn't from. Yeah, it wasn't British. It was all American, <laughs> but it was what it was, and I was okay. Yeah. And listen, but if you didn't, if you around. didn't, if you didn't know who John Constantine yeah. was, it was a fine movie. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. that's it. So I've got the game and all, but so at the end of it, right? Hmm. You, so you got twenty years of just dropping the ball on the hard work. That they've done in the previous, uh, you know, two decades, just mm-hmm. building up on all the IP. So, and, wh- and here what? comes and here comes manga, right? Here comes yeah. manga. Every yeah. single thing that's successful, anime. Anything, anime, anime. Let's go, let's go. You can. I mean, I watched the anime that was like later turned into manga yesterday. About um, gosh, it was called uh, Camino Friends. So it's about this. It's kind of like sci-fi, but it isn't sci-fi, but it's sci-fi. About a, a, just females, all characters females, right? They, uh, they're some sort of like, uh, they're part of a Japari park, which is a Sahara, 
things and talks about um, Amazon, so it's like, it's like park. And they just like, it's a show for kids, PG. And I'm yeah. like, what is going on that these other guys just can't grasp that that cartoons are easier to accessible to people than theaters? So last year, or you couldn't get theaters going on, so you could have spent uh, like yeah you know, months on and just going tick 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 like they did with Batman Long Halloween, right? I guess that's what mm-hmm. it came out of. But yeah. you've got so many amazing titles. Why yeah. not? Like I mean, so I think they've got like what's it? Two comics a week. Yeah, is it fifty so, uh, a month? Well, uh, DC's not anymore. It used to be, but uh, <laughs> they've yeah. scaled way, way back. I think they're less than thirty now. But what you've got is that there has been stuff, and you've got to remember all that stuff is actually it's not aimed at you and me anymore. Uh, and even the X Men was mm-hmm. actually, you know, at the time I was twelve, thirteen, or whatever it was, you know, it was actually aimed at that eight to twelve age group. Um, but what mm. that program did, it didn't talk down. So you've we're from, yeah. I think, two thousand and eight or nine. There was Avengers Earth Mightiest, and that was written by mm. Carl and Yost, who um, who created uh, X twenty three and Wolverine uh, and X Men Evolutions. Uh, there yeah. are a lot of people who grew up with that, that show. That had three or four seasons and then and then stopped. Um, but Avengers yeah. Earth Mightiest was like the like greatest hits of the Avengers. And uh, uh, it was kind of a cross between – this was just before the Avengers movie came out. And it, was, it was done really well. And then as did with them, when Disney bought them, they, had, they, they stopped that. And there mm-hmm. was Ave- Avengers Assemble came out and the storytelling was i would say disney fired a bit it was kind of dumbed down a little bit whereas earth's mightiest mm. had some it was more of the continuous storytelling whereas earth's mightiest was back to the not the overall arc it was back to the one and done episodes mm. and it was very much well that was almost from six it, it moved the age group watching it down and there's a prolific yeah. and a lot of that stuff gets caught up because it was only on disney kids or around the world that was a pay-per-view prescription it wasn't available in every country um whereas you know when the x-men came out there were only three tv channels in new zealand and the x-men's animated came out so and it wasn't going to be there was no cartoons on tv one um so now you've got there is content out there but yep. it's been diluted over so many different streams and it's not as accessible. Uh, and I don't think it's mm. as challenging because I don't think, I think it doesn't, I think the one thing the first X-Men series did and the Batman animated series, it didn't talk down the kids, Yeah, you know? It, yep. had, it had adult themes and, and conflicts that, you know, challenge, challenge kids and made you think. A lot of the stuff, mm. it's there, but it's just not, it hasn't got, I wouldn't say an edge, but it's just not mm. normalized or I, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's, which is frustrating. Yeah. But again, we're not the target audience anymore. So there may be some kids out there. Yeah. But if, if, if they love it, love it to bits, like with these things, what I've noticed is that the toy companies are bringing back. 80s products, right? And 90s products on the show. And, it, and it's not kids who are buying it, it's guys so, like you and me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what shows that, they, like, can't, they, they can't, they, they can't afford lost, to buy it. Right. And that it shows that they, they've lost that market anyway by having to do that because they've priced the market out for the kids. Yeah. Well, you wait for the next six months. You wait for the next six months because plastic's going through the roof. So, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you're talking an extra 10 quid on almost everything that you might be buying now. So, Funko Pops are mostly 100% plastic. So, I can see those going up about three or four quid each. So, yeah. I'm probably just I'm, trying I'm, to get, trying to get my to... dog out. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm trying to get my last. Oh, I know what happened. I just, I just realized I screwed up. I uh, told my Funko Pops. I just realized I screwed up majorly. I um, I walk. Um, I was supposed to go grab these two. Off the yeah. shelf, um, like from the back. 
and it yeah. didn't show up. And then it also didn't show up on my... Um... No, it was these two. From um, Blade Runner, my favorite show, movie of all yep. time. Yep. Right. Yep. So you won't, be, so... you won't be getting to see Blade Runner again. You don't... You don't see, you don't see yeah. uh, five or so, ten year olds buying those. But <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it's not on my, it's not on my back thing. Um, and I'm and I'm there fuming because I'm like, it's gone. Somebody's bought it. It's gone, and I've forgotten that. I, you know, um, it's gone. So I just ordered the same two again, and it's got delivered this morning, and it's just sitting over there in the box. <laughs> Oh, so no. I'm, I got to go oh, figure no. out how you know I've just spent another fifty bucks or fifty six dollars because I had to be sent. Because you, you just because you just mentioned that I went went up and got got these. I went to actually get Deckard and um you know Deckard and Chris. Yeah. Right. Because I'm trying to complete my things. That's what I was going to say. That I I don't need to um complete my thing uh, my my four pack of those because. I just did because it got delivered this morning. Because I'm I'm a completist, right? Yeah, yeah. I think oh. comic book readers are completed. You know? Hello. And so <laughs> and so the other thing is um I have oh gosh, where is where is it? Uh I've completed my X Men. I've pl- completed my um my um oh that's right, my boys. I've got to complete my boys. Yeah, because that's what I should have bought was the two boys. I haven't ordered these two ones from there. It's like, oh, this is going to cause me a headache. But it's okay. I'm sure there's somebody out there who wants these two. From You'll, be You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'll get rid of them sometime. But I mean, even might not even depending. Yeah. Uh, but oh, look, I'm, so, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get rid of the thing about of stuff toys, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, like you're saying, the pricing could out. But the other thing is that. Yeah, you're right. They they're going they're going for us to are nostalgic about what we loved in the past. But and that's why I think Funko works because Funko goes around and um you know, gets titles that are great, like the big t- proper titles. I think they went wrong when they try to get T V shows that that like T V talk shows. Come on, you know, who wants it? But when they go around like movies, you know, superhero stuff, when they go into horror movies, because they start doing horror movies and stuff. Yeah, you know, uh that sort of because they don't just put out the one when it comes to movies and stuff. It's like this one here, they put out all four and they put out six with the boys and I've got bright, um, starlight up there and I've got, I've got butcher coming and all that, you know, but, but we like, when you're a kid, you, you couldn't afford 20 bucks, five bucks on a, on a toy. Right. Nothing. You never, so, uh, I, I, I have yeah. actually, I, I bought a couple, uh, from Mark one because they're on sale. And even then, I, I was going for that. Hey, when I'm a teenager, I should be up, you know, drinking and playing rugby, and you know, I've got all these toys. Yeah. So I, ooh, I felt a bit weird about it, but you know, I still got it and yeah. set it up. I remember t- I, got, I took it to when I first got my my first job. I I got my desk and I thought I'll I'll bring a toy in and put it. And I was like that lasted about three days because I yeah. felt a bit stink. Yeah. <laughs> but these days, you could probably you could do that and no worries, no one would care. Yeah. You know, it was the, the the comics and your love of fandom was still sort of a shadowy thing that you kind of kept to yourself, and maybe a couple of friends yeah. who, who knew. But now it's okay to be a you know. I wouldn't say a, a, I, I think the word nerd and geek is used wrongly. You know, we're, we're all fans, yeah. and it's okay to be fans of well, things. You know, it's exactly the same. So my love for comic books is the same as someone's love for the, um, Manchester United. You know. You see yeah. people wandering around yeah. in blazer all around the world. People in blazing in Manchester United or Liverpool kits, and yeah. you know all, they're not even they're black. not even yeah. All, all blacks is a, a touch different, but similar. Yeah. yeah. Um. The but yeah, it's it's okay to love what you love, you know. And with you know with the internet and the world's a very small place, you know people will share that love with you, and you know that's half yeah. the reason why it started making my own comics is um you know it's it's amazing people all around the world who if, I, I wouldn't if i wasn't in the uk i wouldn't be doing this because you know you've, right. you've got a close network of comics people here um kickstarters are very popular over here uh they work they work really well Kick, going on kickstarter once a week is the saying for some people is going online and ordering stuff from the comic book shop you know it's just just done and um it's it's good you know 
Um, but the it, yeah, it, it's easier now to find your community, whether it's manga, whether it's anime, whether it's everything, you know. And yeah, you know, that's that's a that's a great thing. And yeah. It, it's the thing about you know what drew you, drew you to X Men as a kid anyway. You know you, you might feel times when you're isolated or alone, and you know you find solace in, in your books and your adventures and the comics and stuff, and you see similar characters struggling with things. And um, yeah, you know, and, and it's a bit. <laughs> comics are expensive, man. Don't get me wrong. Things are. It's you know, it's some some things are very cost prohibitive. Um, you, you, we talk about distribution and kids getting their hands on it. There's only about five comic shops in New Zealand, and then there's some online shops yeah. as well, which are guys running stuff out of their out of home and stuff. Mm. But um, it's it was always I think growing up, you know, we had access to 2000 AD and a lot of those shitty. Yeah. Uh, they were they were very they were kid friendly comics like um, Buster and uh, Dandy and Bino and, Dandy? and Bino. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're, they're yeah, still on Pat, supermarket. Yeah, yeah they're, they're still on supermarket shelves yeah. here. Uh, I doubt very much they're in dairies in New Zealand anymore. I, don't, I doubt no. I wouldn't know two thousand ODs even on the shelf in dairies in New Zealand anymore. Commando no, was the I other one. Yeah, you know, remember Commando, the little real small little books yeah. about war. War, war, war stories. Jesus, I mean, they're, they're still plugging away. They, they work out of uh, Aberdeen in Scotland. They're still plugging away. Most of it's um, reprints, but uh, yeah, you know, not really top of mind for a young kid to want to buy a war comic anymore. Because wars, even yeah. though there are there are there are wars and troubles in the world, it certainly is not top of mind for a kid. You know, whereas we grew up, we had grandparents who fought in World War Two and stuff like that, or Vietnam and. You know, yeah. Kids these days, are, kids these days don't know how lucky they are. I tell you, <laughs> but um, well, it's, it's, well, it's they, interesting. They, uh, I think it's it's not it's not the thing that you want to escape into, and no, um, no, and because because it's you know it's in movies, it's online, it's uh, it's in the news. You see it all happen all the time. It's not an escapist thing as it used to be back in the eighties and nineties because it's not. You know, who wants to see that sort of stuff in reality and then go mm. and read it? Whereas yeah. superheroes and all this, yeah. you know, supernatural stuff, anime, manga, and stuff, yeah. it's escapism, you know. Yeah. I like, re, I like one of my favorites right now, um, recently, and uh, is Re Zero, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Life in Another another World, you know, the characters in it. I just love the characters in that and the stories in it. It's like another world. You're not, you're not in, you know, the little New Zealand, you're not in, um, you know, not on our universe, it's some, yeah. or even on our planet. You're somewhere else, yeah. and escapism, and that's like where yeah. superheroes come in, right? It's like someone else, somewhere else, doing in some other element or universe of, you know, version of our Earth. Uh, okay, let's talk about your comet since we're coming into, um, into the UK and stuff, and you moving there and doing that. Now, Um, you you work on um, you know your comic is this this land right? Yeah, one of them. Yeah, I hope you got that right because yeah. and and the company uh, like your company is Aurora Comics and you do that yeah. through there. Uh, yeah. You're up to issue what right now? Uh, issue three starts uh, Kickstarter on the fifteenth of August. Um, so basically, I, I got into comics. Um, you know, collecting for the last 20 years. Um, Miller, yeah. Miller, Mark Miller said that he's going to do a talent contest. I had a look at it. Mm. I might do that. And then Mrs. tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, you're going to enter that contest or what? You know, you're always going on about comic books. And stuff. all right, fine, I'll do it. And uh, I was lucky enough to win. And, um, yeah, got published uh, by Image and um, in the Miller World Annual way back in 2016. And, uh, yeah, we did a, we did a four-page four page hit girl story. With uh, Loki cover art, he's now this is uh, Oscar Yildrim, and lots of violence and heads flying everywhere and stuff, and only a, a short four-page story. There's me, yay! I'm a business suit because that's the only photo I had at the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, very lucky. I uh, thought, yeah, that's great. I'm gonna be writing Marvel in no time, yay! And no, of course that's how many how, <laughs> how many copies of that um, issue have you got? I had a hundred. I have two left. <laughs> so yeah, you've got a hundred, and you basically 
sold it out or did you give it away? Uh, no, I used it um, for the first Kickstarter. I used them as a, um, a bonus, uh, like for an extra yeah. pound or something, you know. So mm. Um, mm. it was, yeah, just a Kickstarter's uh, about trying to deliver. It's really hard. Uh, you got to deliver value for money for people. So if they're gonna, if they're gonna put something down on your book, you can't. You got to see what extras can I add that will make people might not cost me a lot of money, but people could see value in yeah. and contribute maybe a bit more money to the campaigns, or they see it as a as a good reward. Um, and yeah, you know, I've done a couple of conventions uh, over the last well, not last year because um, everything was shut down um, over the last couple mm. of years. And uh, sold a few books then. So this land was originally printed two years ago, uh, along with another yeah. book of ours, Schism. Where is it? Schism, which is a sci-fi. Um, we call it, it's like a, we say it's like Battle Battle Angel Alita meets Memento sort of thing. And then okay. there's this land. This land. So all the art is completed for all five issues of this land. And, um, yeah. but the coloring and the lettering hasn't been done on three, four, five. So there's 140 pages there. And yeah. just through, I had a bad back injury and had back surgery last year between COVID and everything. I couldn't afford to keep, I couldn't, I didn't have my own money to keep putting towards stuff. You know, I was thinking about selling all my collection and all sorts of stuff, um, which probably would have helped. Yeah. But you know what it's like. It's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? It's something you're like, <laughs> it's like, ah. yeah. It's, it's a really tough yeah. one. And I do have a pile of books that I am trying to sell off. But, Once in a blue um, moon. It's, it's it's really hard to, um, oh my god, just just packing and shipping shipping stuff. Um, so, yeah, I won a spot in the Middle World Talent Contest, got published, and then realised I didn't know. Dick. So I went around all the conventions in the UK. Uh, most of them have trade days and um, which a whole lot of classes and, and um, uh, speeches given by artists and writers uh, from across the UK. Um, and I was going to those trade shows and just asking lots of questions and networking and, um, you know, buying writers uh bears at the bar afterwards and stuff like that and just yeah. trying to get into their heads and figure out how they got there and um and you know getting into there's a lot of stuff and knowledge out there but you got to find out what works best for you you know you learn about things like the story circle you learn you know you, there's books like um all my actual comic process books are downstairs unfortunately but i've got a big stack of them yep. and um it, it most of them say the same things, but um, every now and then there's a little gem in one or two of them that just sticks in your mind. And a lot of it was about the stuff these these books don't tell you, and it's you know it's about writing for the space you've got and and uh, learning about page turns and odd and even numbers when it comes to printing and uh, you know yeah. it's always in lots of four so you can't have a 25 page comic book it just is impossible yeah you can but there'll be a blank page on the back <laughs> you know or, or little, you end up putting, like up, putting an advert on there yeah yeah well, you end up putting an advert on it but it's I've still a waste well. of you know you still have to do the four page thing it just yeah 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 22 it, pages 26 it, 20 uh, bit, 32 especially right. so the going back to the whole every comic book could be someone's first so you either have to have a decent mm -hmm. recap page at the start which doesn't drown people in too much words. It just gives a, a low overview of things um previously mm -hmm. on sort of thing or hey uh, you know for this land one um we started off so this land is basically a future New Zealand, right? Where people have developed yeah. the powers and abilities of the Māori gods. Um, originally, the story didn't involve uh, the Māori god side of things, but uh, the story came about when um, I, I wanted to do something. They say, write what you know, and I wanted to do something very New Zealand-based. And yeah. I saw, I, I don't know, what does a future New Zealand look like? I haven't read anything that talks about what the future looks like. You see all these sci-fi and steampunk stories of post-apocalyptic Britain and yeah. America. What does the future New Zealand look like? And uh, there was the Kaikoura earthquake uh, when the harbour shot up five metres. 
and um, all the yeah. boats were um, moored. I think they say it, and uh, maroon, moored. And it was like, oh, that's weird because usually we have earthquakes and everything goes tumbling down. So, and about the same time, there was a story about the eighth forgotten continent and New Zealand having a very low sea shelf, and this continent was called uh, Tului Maui, uh, the land of Maui. And uh, I was like, well, what if that popped up? And if that whole yeah. continent came up, well, how would that change the structure of New Zealand and what would happen? You know, let's say, well, mm -hmm. Auckland sits on a hundred dormant volcanoes, or is it a thousand? What if they all went up? What would happen to the people of Auckland then? You know, it's like, holy crap. And the no, more that reminds I, me of the, the with the Axman of the Krakoa. You know, uh, the savage land. Well, I wrote this before, yeah. Krakoa, so, but you're right. <laughs> so um, I wrote this in 2018. So it's, it still hasn't been yeah. published. So there's a few choices. Oh, no, no. My Krakoa <laughs> goes way back to the 2000. I mean, I oh, sorry, that, that, um, yeah, yeah, the original Krakoa. Yeah, 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 the original yeah. one. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was interesting, and and the ball just started rolling. And so you know, so let's say, well, it, there's no electricity, there's no electronics in this. After this huge geographic incident, you know, disaster that happens to the whole earth, how does that affect the world? Does the um, does this earth shift on its axis? How did this thing happen? Let's say the moon was destroyed, and the whole rotational pull of the earth was changed and then, you know, land r rose from the ground and, you know, what would happen to those people and, you know, to make things interesting, but what if they developed powers and abilities of the regions they were from, you know, sort of a little bit avatarish, a little bit, but not, not yeah. quite. So, you know, the people of Auckland, those who survived because you have a million people in Auckland then the population goes down to a hundred thousand. Those who survived, yeah. um, you know, their skin changed. They adapted to the heat of this lava flowed area, filled area. Some of them had the ability to manipulate fire. Some of them had the ability to manipulate this thing I call mana steel, um, which is a which is a rare skill that only um, can be forged by uh, the people of Auckland, now called Axland. You know, very simple. Yeah. <laughs> term because why Axland because it's hot. It's, you know, it's. This is and you then, building your world yeah, and your universe yeah. that these creatures are these characters that they live in. And and this is the difference between like jumping on a book that's already been established for decades. Okay, we know who okay, I'm gonna come in and write about Wolverine. Oh, we know he just says bubble, his thing goes snick, he's got yeah. these blades on his hands. And he's the best at what he you does. Know, everybody <laughs> knows Yeah, and everybody knows what he what he's doing, or who he yeah. is, who yeah. his friends are. Mm. No blank sheet. It's all done for you. They just come and yeah. write a story with these characters, and they still fail. So yeah. here you are, so, like coming up with your own imagination out of you know yeah. out of your brain, having seen all these things. I, I love the world building. I, I really do. I think. I mean, because there's, I've done so there's, many worlds. There's stuff I've there's, done there's, that will uh, never see the page, but uh, you know, I needed yeah. the reasoning yeah. and and without giving too much away about the story because I want everyone to read it. So basically um, th there's, there's reasons why everything happens. So someone could come and challenge yeah. me and say, hey, why does that happen? You have to read the book. Yeah. But I know and you know, there's, it all does structurally make sense uh, and the reasoning yeah. and there's stuff, you don't need to know some stuff but as a reader yeah. but as the writer, I've made sure I've got yeah. my ducks in a row and there's no uh, desuk, desuk makana. I can never say that one right. Um, you know, machine of God that it's comes in and magically, <laughs> ma mag yeah. mag magically fixes everything. Yeah. Um, but essentially the story is, is this young woman called Halna. And uh, one day um, she's got her own mysterious past and whatnot. And uh, she's yeah. basically on parole in Northland on the 600-mile beach because it's a big beach now. Yep. And um, the uh, out of the sky, uh, this comet appears and it crashes around a fireplace where her nieces and nephews have been um, playing. And they're all entombed and, and, and trapped in uh, glass because when heat hits sand, you know, glass. Yeah. So, and out yeah. of this crash site walks out this guy who claims to be Tane the uh, god of the forest and they're like and what 
And she knocks him out and they wake up, both wake up. Uh, he, she knocks him out and, and Tane wakes up in a jail cell uh, in the uh, in Auckland, which is called Axland. And uh, Tane convinces Helena to uh, free him and help him find the demigod Maui. And the story takes us, she goes to a pub at uh, the... Um, the Bombay so Gorge. Very cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've yep. got she, it. I she, got she goes, yeah, she goes the to the local pub. Tavern. We'll say tavern then. She goes to a tavern. So the that's, you know, you sort of. Drinking hole is, as the Aussies call yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where there's, um, where, uh, well, for, oh, there's other things that happen between that. I won't get too much into the details. Sure. And Don't she give assembles, away too much. Yeah. She assembles yeah. a motley, motley crew of uh, miscreants and mercenaries. And uh, they help her break Tane out of this uh, jail cell. And uh, they venture down the road to, uh, or up the road, but that's another story, uh, to um, a place called the White Tomb, formerly known as Waitomo. And uh, you imagine if there was a huge geological, geographic disaster and a huge earthquake, there would be a couple of thousand tourists in Waitomo and if they got trapped yeah. under there, how would they survive? What would happen to them? So the people, this is a place of thousands, of, hundreds of communities from around the world of these people who were trapped underneath the earth. They got it. They discovered an ancient cavern and they lived off the moss and the nutrients that they could. And eventually uh, they, their skin changed, white, almost luminescent look because there's no yeah. light down there. And, uh, yeah. yeah, these people had, had a war with the Axelanders and there's conflict and confrontation. And uh, we open up issue three where we I, – I don't know if I sent you the clip. We just had some animation come through. But uh, issue three, we start with a big kaiju fight between a Tanifa and a giant moa-type dude. That's the cover to three. And yeah, it's 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 all on like Donkey Kong. So uh, yeah, so now before you go on, a, before you go yeah, on, I didn't want to say too much. <laughs> yeah, before you go on, we know that Mark One is carrying your book here in New Zealand. Yeah, he's how many to, issues of yeah. your book? How many issues have they got? I mean, like how many numbers of each issue have they got? Because I'm I, sure someone yeah, who's watching this is going to go, okay, in New Zealand, especially if they're local. Here, they yeah. will go like, okay, I've heard about this book. The guy really told I mean, I'm interested now. I want to buy one, right? Like, so, last Chris, time we talked, Chris I wasn't has... so much into it. This time, I'm like, I want one. <laughs> so, Chris has two copies of issue one left and about six copies of issue two left. But uh, the next Kickstarter, which starts in, um, like I so said, 15th of August, all three issues will be available then, you know, as a bundle of, because uh, I've still got, I'm going to have to do another okay. uh, another print run of issue one, actually, because they're okay, very okay. low on those. So but um, let's talk yeah, about the bundle one. Yeah. Let's talk about this bundle. How does the bundle work and how much is it? So, everything's in uh, UK pounds, unfortunately. Uh, so I can't give you the right. exact translation. Usually, roughly, it's about double. Um, so to ship to New, for, to New Zealand, it's about 12 New Zealand dollars. And uh, a, book, a book is, uh, because there's, issue one's 20, well, issue one's 32 pages, issue two is 28, issue three is 28. And yeah, they're they're five pound each, which is just I think it's just under or just over ten New Zealand dollars a book, which yeah, it's it's an it's an ask. Yeah, I understand that. Sure. Um, so the, basically, like a forty two bucks to get a send here to New Zealand, all three books. I think, yeah, the, now I think because it's about that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, so early or, on, you're or, saying that you had more. Or, early on, you were saying that there's more stuff that you put in to make it more attractive to Kickstarter buyers. What is in those three bundles? To make me want to buy it, like you, you right. sell it to me. Okay, so because then I'll, you, know, you get a digital copy of each book as well. You also get a digital ash can, which is basically uh, the first eight pages of issue one, uh, the first three pages of issue two, three, four, and five. So the intros to the everything. There's no text on four and five so you don't know what's going on because i didn't want to give away too much you see um you'll get a director's cut digital direct hey you get a director's cut digital director's cut yep. which has uh the script 
it has the pencils, the inks, and the colours all broken down so you can see how the book came together. Uh, Ashcan Digital Cut. I think there's a bundle of other things like um, uh, digital posters and pinups and things like that. So digital's great because it doesn't... Yeah. It, it's stuff that the content like that's there. People. And yeah, yeah. weight. When you're shipping stuff, it's all about weight. Um, on top mm. of that, we have a whole lot of pinups and posters from New Zealand artists. Um, mm. So uh, Craig Peterson out of Spain, he's done a pinup for us for our character Beach. Mm. Uh, Leo Artbro, who's just moved to Brisbane from New Zealand, uh, he's done a pinup of our character Rana. Uh, very fortunate, uh, my friend uh, Zach Howard, who's uh, drawn for Hellboy, uh, The Cape, and Venom, he did a pinup for us. And this is our lead helmet, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, Michael Mulapola, who New Zealand's best kind of artist is right. Far, yeah. for Michael, Michael or Michael, I haven't learned how to pronounce his name correctly because I'm Mikel, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he is, um, he's done, where is it? There's stuff everywhere. I'm, I'm stuff on the wall behind me. Uh, he's done an he's done two pinups for us actually. So, one, oh, here it is. Hang on. Uh, okay, while you do that, let me ask, um, let me just say hi, hi to J uh, Jason. Hey, Jason, have you got a question? If you've got a question for uh, Mark that I haven't asked, um, <laughs> pop it in and I'll put it up. Cheers, Jason knows everything. Um, <laughs> so he, he's did this amazing. This was the first print that was ever done for the book. And um, mm. I've also uh, made it because uh, I'm into my action figures as well. I customize a lot of them. So I've also got a customized action figure of this uh, that's Helena's brother, Dre. And I am going to be sending. Where is that? Damn it. <laughs> so much stuff. Hey, where's the where's the guy with the blue arm that I've seen all over Instagram? Ah, that Funko right. Pops. Well, that that Show has the, the Funko Pops. Right here we go. Mm. Ah. So we've got five we've got five more minutes. Oh, right, we've got five, five more minutes. minutes. Tell me your Funko five. Pops and tell me all about them. Right, so this is Moa. Uh, this is a guy who is a metamorph, and he evolves into. Oh, look at that! A giant Moa. Look at that one. So that is one a second. So, uh, so Jason's asking the question I asked him about, and it's it is a full arc six issue. Five issues. Five. There you go. Jason. The the it's a, it's a five issues. It's a, right? So there's a third third issue kicks off on August fifteenth. And the next two, I'm not sure if we'll get them out by the end of the year, but I'm hoping to. The thing is, you can't wait till all five are out because if we don't hit the milestone each time, we don't know if we're going to get. Yeah. I'm confident we'll do it, but everyone's support helps. And this is this is yeah. uh, I did created a custom Marvel Legend, and I'm going to be sending this to Michael. How do you? Uh, how do you? As a like, thank you. How do you? How do you end up with doing all this stuff? Because I'm I'm watching all you all this uh, work. Are you? How do you go about? It and who does it for you? I do it all myself. So basically, like we were, you guys haven't been in lockdown. We've been in lockdown. So I've I've bought yep. airbrushes. So you've had and the entire. So you've I've, had a whole year to do this. I've learned how to customize the crap out of stuff. Omnibus issue. Yes. Yes, 20, 2040 omnibus issue. Absolutely. <laughs> Either way. Um, yeah. So there's some more art that's come out. Uh, Limit Break Customs and uh, Thunder Punch, uh, or another Kiwi artist, has um, done pinups for issue three. So I'm only using New Zealand artists for the pinups moving forward. Uh, one, a good mate of mine. Osgar Yildrim, though, who did the um, Hit Girl story with me, and he is done, he's done cover art for Loki. Uh, he did mm. this pin up for me, which is a tribute to Days of Future Past. Yeah. yeah. So there will be a variant. I remember, I remember that cover so well. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, I. He, na he nailed it. That is so, a, that is a, a glory day of. Um, Glory day of uh, X-Men comics, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. 
you know, so like the night, uh, like the ninety period. Issue issue three, which will be available uh, for backing on the fifteenth. There's also an option to get the variant cover, so there will be a comic book with this cover on it, which is fantastic. So, and the other little bundle thing I did, which is kind of cool, is <laughs> probably the most Kiwi thing ever. Beer cozy, can cooler. <laughs> <laughs> because it packs flat and it's easy to ship. So yeah, there's lots, so we've got pins, we've got can coolers, we've got posters, we've got variant covers, we've got we've got coloring books as well. The thing about the coloring books, there's not going to be a third coloring book. The thing about the coloring books is there's a lot of issue four, issue five in here. You can see what's coming, but there's no um it's well, not yeah, 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 you don't no you, you, you can see stuff yeah. coming, but you don't know what's coming. So yeah, yeah. But uh, the artist, so I'm going to uh, go back to yeah. I'm going to go no, back to go. Jason's uh, question here. Uh, so yeah. yes, how how are the custom pop and Mar uh, Marvel Legends? You know how how did you like you said you customized them, but how yeah. did you you know so, how did you build them? Like did you design yeah. it yourself? Did you so basically, yourself, you know? I've, I found a body type that was similar to my char character. So this one was originally, right. who was this guy originally? I think it's a re he's a wrestler. No, no, no. Oh, this one's um, oh. Sophia, who, whoever plays Deathstroke in the D DC movies, he's in um, that vampire TV show with Anna Paquin. Anyway, Joe Maganalino, Magana Joe, whatever. And anyway, this was that character. And so I um, stripped it down, uh, pulled it to bits, pro sanded it, primed it, and painted wait, it up. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So that's an actual Funko Pop toy figure. Yeah. Yep. That you re repainted and redid. So it's not like yep. you send it to an artist yep. to design it. Okay. That's where I was no. going. That looks perfect. <laughs> yeah. Why does it look so it's, a, it's an actual Funko Pop that's been re repainted and redesigned. Yeah, repainted and little bits added, a lot of extras and stuff. So, yeah, mm. very happy okay. with that. Uh, with the action figures, though, uh, a lot more work is involved. So with this mm. one, for example, that was Red Hulk. Uh, I took his oh, okay. uh, hair up. It was Red Hulk. I took the hair off. We added some uh, tattoos. Uh, the um, uh, what's this? The, Sa the Samoan tattoos because uh, these of a Samoan heritage. Yeah. Uh, there, no, no, it's not Tamako. It's something else. It's uh, I should know. Tato. I yes, think it's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I studied um, all that. So yeah. You see all the uh, additional rock and chunks on his arm. Yeah and stuff so that's all uh and his bed i sculpted as well and painted it's hard to see like this but uh that that's going straight to mickle for what do you mean um, by sculpted oh so what do you, mean um, by sculpted? you get um procreate putty and clay so you know it's, it's uh, molding molding and sculpting clay and then you get in and you draw the hairlines in with the with your with your little knife and stuff so yeah it's, it's quite, quite detailed quite proud of that one but uh, that's that's going that's a one of a kind i've got some for the next couple of campaigns i'll be these are available um mm. as bundles i think it's about 50 or 60 pounds not just for that but you get everything else the everything so you, yeah, so yeah. you get a, you get a funko pop you get the book all the books you get all the prints you get everything with that you get a pin you get the you get the uh bear stubby holder can cooler neoprene cooler holder every i gotta be careful every place around the world's got a different name for the bloody things i just call it stubby holder but sure. yeah. yeah um stubby's yeah so these are available this time around hopefully by the time the next mm -hmm. game's campaign comes around to have some more marvel legends done so yeah um mm. i yeah it's it's kind of great it's great fun but that, that yeah mickle's done uh the poster this poster here and he's done another pin up yep. for us for issue four which i mm. may have let slip out uh because it was so good but um yeah that's coming a bit later down the line 
And uh, sure. Izzy Joy, Izzy Isabel Joy, uh, she's done a uh, print for issue four as well. So, as far as the only things left to do for this Kickstarter, the coloring is underway and almost complete for issue three, and the lettering yeah. is almost complete as well. So, as far as rewards done, everything's done except the printing of the comics and the mm. sketch rewards. So this, we, we do a whole lot of sketch rewards. So I've got a competition sure. at the moment that, where you can enter the draw to win a one-of-a-kind sketch cover. And uh, PR, the artist, is mail, mailing them all over from Poland. And, yeah, they're bloody brilliant. So he, he's got about a dozen issue ones without blank sure. covers. Yeah. So he can he can do, do the art and, and then he sends them, sends them out to me or all around the world wherever we need it. So, yeah, we're... Things are going really well. Uh, it will be collected in trade. I think hopefully by next Christmas uh, it will be more readily available in New Zealand. But we need to go on an issue by issue basis to get to yeah. the uh, to the end goal. So it, everyone's support is very much appreciated. Uh, whether whether that mm. be through Mark One Comics in Hamilton or backing the campaign online, and you can do anything from a, a pound to uh, I think the highest, and believe it or not, I, I never thought this would happen. You always, I'm told, you always should be put a ridiculous reward in. Someone backed mm. over 500 pounds last time, a guy from Amsterdam. I'm like, this can't be real. This is a joke. And I message him and I rang him up and he's like, no, no, this is real. Yep. And he bought, you can get yep. a original, original comic art, sketches. Yeah, he's, he's spent over 500 pounds. And I'm going to be sending that man a Christmas card every year um yeah um so yeah there's lots of stuff available uh yeah but uh it, it's but got, I, I think yeah. this is this is the um this is the um you know this is a new world order of things when it comes to comics which is like you're able to create your own universe your own following <laughs> your own direct market because someone supports what you're doing and yeah, I think and what, what's of what we have on the internet? So what's interesting about this book is there's um there's a bit of Toreo in it as well, and uh, one of the first things we int we introduce people to this new world, and within this new world, uh, blah, 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 blah. if you would enhance if you'd like to enhance your enjoyment and knowledge with the correct pronunciations and meanings, please use MaoriDictionary.co.nz. So for you and me, there's <laughs> words like um, uh, far now. Fungare, yeah, or, you know, yeah. we know how those words sound, yeah. how to pronounce them. People around the globe don't. Yeah. So I remember, yeah. you know, we were picking up Asterix books and there was Latin in there. Tintin books had a bit of yeah. German and, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, even the X Men books, you've got uh, Nightcrawler saying Das Vidania uh, well, Colossus saying Tovarich, Comrade. You know, yeah, this 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 is not a full bilingual book, but there's enough words there to leave kids in New Zealand with, you know, this is our land, this is our culture, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and it's you're sharing it with the rest of the, wo and it's the world. It with, yeah. So what's amazing is uh, I think the breakdown is, I think it's about 15% New Zealand, 15% Australia, and then about 30% UK, 30% America, you know, it's crazy. And then a couple in, couple in Europe, basically. So we've had we had over I think we had about two hundred backers the last campaign and two hundred the campaign before. Yeah. Um, it's oh the reason yeah. I was walking away was because of this. Just this yeah, week yeah. I picked this up. Absolutely, you know. So um, of... th those are basically your first comic books. So they're in this, every school library, yeah. every you know. So my, my yeah. In, in an ideal world, I'd love for this land to be in a school library. And be an evergreen yeah. project that could just sit there, you know. And you know, yeah. who knows? Um, it's had lots of I great response. Point... I've had people. I've had um, the guys, um, Trent, who did the Toreo um, for me. He he just double checked my Toreo and said, "Oh, well, we might want to change that word to that and whatnot." Um, he he was over the moon when he read. It. He said, "I've never read a comic book before. I went out today and bought a whole bunch." after reading that, you know, he was really into it. And I've got a couple of mates who are school teachers and are teaching, you know, you got kids, um, at, at teachers in high school and primary school, and they've given PDF copies to their kids and stuff, or they're struggling, 
you know, slow adapters to reading and stuff. And their their praise for it, sure about it guys. For, getting, um, for getting kids engaged has been really uh, there's a fall on the line or something like that. I don't see anything wrong with me here, but um I think uh Mark's even a bit of an issue on his side with on his um on his maybe my um internet connection. Um, yeah, so I'm like he was saying, like, um, so I mean, when in the '80s, we're like as kids in the '80s. This is what we were reading, yep. uh, and um, in our lunchtime, and we were in the libraries. We were reading Asterix, mm-hmm. and uh... I think everyone can hear me loud and clear. I don't think uh, a rude is coming through, but uh, I can imagine what uh, the Whangarei uh, cell phone coverage is like. So I'm just going to keep talking for a bit. Uh, and, oh, there he, he's coming back. There yeah, he is. We're back. Uh, <laughs> mine's, it was, all good. mine's all good as well. So I don't know what happened there. So, yeah, it just ah. suddenly said, we're having issues and cut it off. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, I was saying, like, so, um, you know, this was our age, uh, life in A's yep. and libraries. And yep. you had Tintin and that, and that was it. You didn't, yep. you didn't fault yourself. Yep. As a comic book reader, so when I went into reading for the next forever, right after coming out of high, uh, yeah, primary school in the, in the eighties, forever. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> you had to go and call my real name out, doxing me on my own site, but it's all right. <laughs> so I mean, so we had, um, you know, we were. I didn't see a difference in not reading comics going into it, and I think this is the cool thing about. Um, I mean, I was the only one amongst my peers while I was working uh, in, you know, in Auckland at the time I was reading all these comics. I was the only one who was reading comics. Everybody yeah. else was drinking and doing drugs and stuff. And I was the only one who was reading. I was the yeah. only one out of all my peers that I knew. Like there's yeah. 20 or 30 of them and a close knit was like five people, but nobody was into it. And yeah. I didn't say, I, I didn't tell them about it. No, no, I didn't say you I, need I, to read this. I, was like, I, I had the same thing, and every now and then, uh, when the, the guys would come over to the flat or wherever we were, um, they'd have a look at my bookcase and just pick a book up and kind of flick through it. But you know, um, I, I definitely didn't know anyone else. But uh, it's amazing, yeah. you know, the world's a very small place now. I mean, I'm talking to you live from yeah. Scotland. Yeah, you know. That's crazy. So yeah. you know, it, it's amazing uh, the the amount of people you can engage, and um, you know, the, like I said, the the backing for this land is uh, I can, yeah. at conventions. So when we're at conventions, we find a um, lot of lot of women and kids love it, love it, um, mm. which is which is great. That's fine. It's it's an all ages book, essentially. It doesn't talk down to kids. There's a lot there. There's yeah. a lot of deeper meanings and, and, and things in there that adults can pull out. Uh, and, you know, for Kiwi kids and Kiwis in particular. So essentially there's, there's a map in the back as well. And we've got this new map of this new land. And essentially instead of north to south, it's done south to north. Uh, main reason because the uh, the early uh, the travellers uh, from Hawaii, key, they always saw... Yeah. Their, their true north was actually the south, right? So we, we've yeah. got this perception that up is north. So the Maui that, pushes, up, pushes up North Island, right? Yeah. So the canoe, the canoe is actually at the top. And so I've, yeah. I've, you know, I've done a lot of research and spoke to the right people and we made the decision, right, we're going to flip the map. So maps the other way around. It's a different land mass as well, so you might not recognize it. Um, there's a few familiar names. There's a few different names. You know, like I say, there's the Bombay Gorge. Why is there a gorge at Bombay? Isn't there a hill at Bombay? You know, the White Tomb. Yeah. Um, New Era. So uh, beneath the White Tomb, of Waitomo, is uh, there was the Aranui Cave. That's where the glowworms and all the stalagmites and stalactites that people see. But this is New Aranui. Um, you know, 600 mile beach instead of 100 mile beach. All these little subtle changes. All right, I I thought it was me, but um, we lost Mark again. Um, yeah, so I think I mean I, I'm really I really like um, 
world building. I mean, for myself, because that's why I'm interested in what Mark's doing and um, and what he's done. And I and I think the world building part of what Mark's doing is amazing. And uh, we've got him back again. So yeah, I was saying that like I, I like I like the world building part of what you're doing. So in finishing here, we've got 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, rather than take, taking all your night, uh, all your morning over there in the UK, it's about <laughs> what eight o'clock now. Uh, quarter, to, quarter to ten. Quarter to ten now. Quarter to ten. So the last thing I want to talk about is writing, and yeah. we've discussed a bit of world building when you're talking about it. And you know, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. We didn't really lose them previously, so I think um, that's why I thought it was my side, but it wasn't this time. Okay, so the world. I mean, like. This morning, like, I mean, the other day, I think it must have been just yesterday, I had a, I had one line idea, one single line. And from that, I started building. And so I started building, building, building. And I'm saying, this is what happens. This is why it happens. And now it's going to turn into a sci-fi cop drama, you know, all this and all that. And then we're going to go, okay. And I was like, oh, it's about this. This is my one point of interest. It's just this one thing that kicks it all off. Yeah. Now, what was the one thing that kicked off this land for you? Um, like I could say it was the, it was the earthquake, and and more about the geography and change, and what that change would mean to New Zealand. Like having mm -hmm. having the Tereo in there and the bilingual stuff. That was just an aspect of the world building. It's become an important part of the book, but yeah. we could strip out. We we it doesn't have to be Tane or Maui and and stuff. But it doesn't. The book could be somewhere else in some other place with some other name, but it doesn't it, – the world building and all those little things just gives it more validity and more impetus and you believe it, you know. So mm -hmm. I could – you know, it could be an alien planet where these gods and blah, blah, blah. The story would still work. Yeah. But I think yeah. having all these other other elements to it, creates mm. something that's sort of real real and tangible and, and it works you know especially in the Kiwi imagination. But the like I say, the best thing is it's cross boundaries into people from all over the world and they're really yeah. into it. And as as Moana might have been someone's first introduction to Pacific Island culture, uh, this potentially yeah. is someone's introduction to New Zealand culture. Now it's a future New Zealand. <laughs> so yeah. everything's not you know but, perfect. Still, but it is still the language and the culture is still there and this is what yeah. i like about it it's like it doesn't matter if it's future or past but especially if it's future that you're still utilizing the culture into it in that way yeah and i think the really good thing when you do your world building like you say you, you could start at a singular point of entry of what you wanted to talk about you could do all that work beneath the surface you know like a, like a, like the old iceberg uh building and building and building doesn't actually all yeah. have to be seen the but, the top. yeah but through that research you will find little nuggets of Oh, I could do this or go that way. So the more you build underneath, the more you actually influence your main story. And I think the the classic one for me, which always makes me laugh, is the people of Tuluia Maui. They call they called the big change where people started developing powers and ability. They called it the fever. Now I, I said, right, well, what is it going to be? It's like a, like a pterogen mist sort of thing event in humans, or is it like a mutation? We'll yeah. call it the fever. Well, okay, fever. So <laughs> what I found out just through going back and looking through stuff. So Maui pulls up the stingray, right? The North Island. Now, a yeah. group, a group of stingrays is called mm. a fever. Yeah. So this, so I'd already designed, uh, and when I was doing my new yeah. map, I was like, okay, so the North Island's going to have, oh, it's going to kind of look like a palm print. Like maybe a god's pushed it up, yeah. but then looking at it as, a, or, or it yeah. could be five tails of more stingrays, blah blah blah. And then I discover, yeah. and I'm already calling the event a fever, and then yeah, a, a group of stingrays is a fever. It's like that's just some crazy coincidence bullshit. But that's you know, and that's when you kind you know, of feel, uh, oh, it's, I'm it's on like, the right path. You know, I'm doing the. I've, this has got to be for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like spiritual, if, if you're like if you're into spirituality and stuff and consciousness, like you know, and I'm I'm all about uh, what it's called. Um, oh gosh, 
Karma? I, I don't know. Someone, <laughs> uh, this, there is karma, but there's the other side of it where we're all interconnected as human beings. We have a common consciousness. So, so somehow, you know, we know how, that's how we relate to each other on a, on, a, on, a, on a spiritual level, right? Because there are things that are common things of interest that hold us together that we know to be right. And so, yeah. and you're, and, you know, somewhere in our brain, like this is to be, you know, we know that this is the right. I have that all the time happen when I'm watching some shows. Like, have I watched this somewhere before? And I've never watched it. But in, our, in my brain, it's like I'm having deja vu. And, and you're right. I think it's just, this is a cool thing when you do have that epiph- epiphany moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and the previous your epiphany moment is like, hey, it relates to what, wait, 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 what? This is so cool, that moment. Yeah. Any, anyone, anyone can bang a story up, but if you've got, if you develop the base for it to stand on, especially if it's your own property, you know, you know, not, you say you don't have to do that for your Wolverines and your Batmans and your Supermans. Yeah. But if you look, if you look at the, the core foundations of what, if you build those strong, you, a lot, mm. you'd be amazed how much more comes out of that. And you know, it's just silly little things yeah. from currency to clothing to you know how how is this how does this world how does this land work you know what are what are the cultural clashes what are the um, what are the sports oh sport for example so uh, in issue one um, there is a uh, at the Eden Pit because it's not Eden Park mm. anymore <laughs> <laughs> we we have we have them playing a game of kiolahi which is a traditional maori um ball sport um mm. and you know it's basically kind of like a ripper rugby sort of thing as well with the tags and you've got a yeah so i was looking for a sport was like, well how do we evolve uh there's going to be uh it's a talking scene I need action going on mm-hmm. it. Let's have it at a sports stadium. Yeah. Right. What sport are they going to play? Yeah. And I was like, well, it couldn't be rugby league or rugby. Uh, do, am I going to have to invent a sport? No, no. There's already a traditional Maori sport there, which is growing in New Zealand. Right. Called ki- 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 so it's like, yeah, okay, let's evolve that. Let's put that in there. You know, it's like, of course, that's, that's you know, we're talking about a, an evolution of a world and using things that were already there. So, yeah. you know, that really helped inform my story, you know, looking and researching into stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it, it makes everything more, as a creator, it makes everything more, all the more rewarding when it all kind of works out. Yeah. So, yeah, we've been very, very lucky so far. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, we've already got, uh, I think, about 106 people following the campaign before it's launched. So there's a big part of Kickstarter. It's really hard because you're kind of shouting into the void a lot um, because everyone yeah. else is shouting about their campaigns. The more people you can get on board before you launch, the easier it is because if you, if you get a good start on the first 24, 48 hours, that helps make, mm. gets you over the finish line a lot easier because you what, what happens usually is it goes like this and then it flatlines for two yeah, or three weeks. Down. Yeah, I'll make that with my one at the moment. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's not an easy thing. They're very challenging Kickstarters, and uh, it, it feels like you're yelling every single day. Hey, get my book, get my book, get my book, get my book. But if you don't yell, no one else will. So yeah, it's yeah, really. But if, you're, yeah, if your book, really... and you're passionate about it. I mean, that's the thing because that's why I like about the whole idea of talking to you about world building because you are the creator of this thing. You know, it's not anybody else. You know this place well. You know, you know how things work in it. And like you said, you had to do all, come up with the answers to somebody before they ask you the answers. You know, the questions. And yeah. I think um, that is what that you know. That's what I I think. Um, I mean, way back when when I was doing sculpturing uh, and building, um, you know, clay 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 sculptures, big huge pots like a meter high pot. Uh, at uh, when I was at art school, and I would be there going. I'm God, all right? I'm, I'm God. I'm giving life to these things out of nothing, like mud. Like, this is mud. Yeah. This is clear dirt yeah. and mud and clay, and I'm building into something, and I'm like, I'm putting this to form. And this is basically, okay, it kind of feels like, okay, you're not really God. Of course not, not God. Mm-hmm. But you are creating something out of nothing on a piece of paper, out of your head, and you're, you're giving it form, and that form becomes other forms has you know words has you know like they, you know, in the beginning there were you know there was a word 
So you're yep. giving life to these words by you know putting it on the piece of paper, and then you're giving it form by imagining what it is, and they're trying to describe it, but in the script. And then you're getting somebody else to come and say, "Is this how you think?" And then you go, "No, no, that's not what I think." And then you go, "This, this, this," and you work together to mold it into what it is. And then you get other people go, "This is my, this is my interpretation." It's like, okay, yeah. And you work together to build this universe that yes. only you got going. But somebody, you know, of course, you know, you, when you work as artists, you got other artists helping you to get it into, you know, three dimension of it. But you, you are it. You, you're basically, you know, what what we say, like you're Stan Lee, you're Alan Moore, you're, you know, you're Mark Miller, <laughs> because you're, you're, you know, that's, I mean, no, all, I of, us, exactly. all of us created <laughs> like that. You know, all of yeah. us are creators like that. I mean, we're not, we're not those people, but at, at the bottom level of it all, we're like that because we are building these imaginations, um, you know, because without that, without that starting point, there won't be no Spider-Man. There won't be no Batman. There won't be all these, um, you know, the crashes that started um, Superman, you know, with, um, with the, one of the, uh, I think it was, was it Jerry Siegel or was it, uh, uh, Jerry Siegel, Siegel uh, and whose father died, you know, whose father was shot, you know, yeah. in real life, his father was shot. And so that sort of starts it off. And I'm like, okay, I mean, for me, it was like Red Dot is what started Red Dot off from a real murder for me. So, I mean, we come out of fantasy as well as reality sometimes. And sometimes we, I mean, as creators and world builders, it doesn't have to be reality. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be fair to be, but sometimes just education. You know, years of reading comics and saying why not, why not, why not. So what got you to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do with comics. I'm, I want to do comics. Why did I do it? Yeah. <sighs> Oof. Uh, I think. Why this land? I th I saw a need for it. And I, I saw a space where a New Zealand story needed to be told that New Zealanders could grow up reading. That was as mm. simple. That was a, the, the, the simple start of it. You know, if I was a kid in New Zealand, what would I have liked to have read growing up? You know, because we've mm. got stuff from everywhere else in the world, but where's our thing? Yeah. Where's our thing that we can hang out, yeah. out on and call our own? You know, I think uh, Terry yeah. Teo, Terry Teo and the Gunrunners, that might have been, yeah. you know, foot rock flats. Love that. You that know? was awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, tell them about foot rock flats. Check this out. <laughs> Just this week, man, at the hospice. Whoops. Let me see. Can you see oh, that? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Wall, wall and dog. And... Yeah. Uh, yeah. That? What is this? Like, uh, this tall glass? Wall, wall, dog. dog. And and who's uh, the other guy? I can't remember. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Man, it's probably up there. I've got, I've got a, you know, the comics up there, and those are really, really valuable right now if you collect yeah. it. Oh so, wow! Yeah. Is there's a place oh. for that. But I mean, as soon as I saw it, like mine, <laughs> you know, there's like no questions about. It. But you're right. So put rock Brett, Terry Tio, uh, Terry and the Gun Runners. Who was? Yeah. Who else was there? Billy Teed stuff. <laughs> You know, yeah, um, yeah, a little bit of that, but that was that was pretty much it. I mean, now Kiwi stuff, you've got Kate, Katie O'Neill, uh, doing some stuff for Omni Press, but that's not New Zealand stuff. You've got uh, Rachel uh, Smythe doing uh, Laura Olympus, but again, that's a great gods and, and monsters, but there's no one doing something that's a bit, bit of us. You know, a bit well, of RTLR no. and, and yeah. Mean. Oh, well, sorry, sorry. Well, I mean, sorry. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. You know, you know, no, but yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I know, I know what you mean exactly. I mean, there's no big, huge titles that look, really stand out. And uh, I mean, yeah. because the whole this, thing is this, we've been told that to, 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 to make it big, we have to Americanize our stuff. We have to make it for the yeah. world, whereas we can't, we can't tell our stories our way. Which is what my our whole motto is for our company is like I mean yeah. for Plunge Comics is our stories our way that's it yeah four so words we've, we've, our stories our way mm. so the whole thing I mean everywhere all the all all the, all the art team PR uh, Lysel 
uh, Hassan and Rob, um, every, everyone's paid up front for me. So that's why it's taken. Mm. So 2016, right? Did that 2016, yeah. the Miller World thing. I've, was, I, I've yeah. spent years saving the money up and trying to get everything done. The main thing I did first, I made sure it was drawn first. So people say, well, why didn't you just color the issue three as you went along? I was like, no, 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 no. Because I needed to, I had a commitment and I, and I had a contract with um, PR to do the whole book. Mm. And uh, the fact that it's completely drawn, that's actually a huge weight off my shoulders. I'm not in this to make money. Yeah. There is no way I will ever get all the money back that I've spent on this. Even, heaven for the, well, even if it I'm, was I'm printed, hoping it, because it, of what it is. Yeah, let, hear me out. Hear I me out. <laughs> I'm hoping because what it is, I'm hoping that when you go into trade or when you go into hardcover, that you'll be able to somehow get back into New Zealand, good graces with the creative, um, creative New Zealand people and show them what it yeah. is and what yeah. the backing is and to be able to go and, you know, get into ministry education into the schools into the libraries and put it out there because we do yeah. need our own right yeah. and this is my that's, this that's my the one thing I, the have, I, do myself. I haven't mm. looked at that side yet it is on the shopping list of things to do but i was never going to go to them without a finished product because that's you know it. comics comics take a long time long time to do you know and yeah they're bloody expensive um you know it, it's the driving force for this is not about making money. It's about leaving a resource for kids. That's that's the goal. Yeah. If if the goal was making money, I would I would be doing forty page done in one stories, not a hundred and forty yeah. pages. You know, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. You know, I I like to think I couldn't find a New Zealand artist who was available for the long period of time I needed. To, to draw the book, yeah. so well, PR, well, the other PR thing does was the two cost, things. It? Yeah, yeah, so PR is it does also the cost? things uh, a little bit, but I've tried to, like I say, all the prints, all the pinups, I've, I've tried to use Kiwi artists for that, except where I've had a couple of mates help out, um, like uh, Os Osga helped out and uh, Zach helped out with the other one. Um, that, that, was, that was just me we trading favors with people who owed me, but I've tried to make yeah. sure where I yeah. where I can. So all the design work, all the uh, co-fi, the 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 pattern yeah. and and the design, that's all been done by New Zealand artists. Uh, all the tribal mm. new the new tribal logos and designs for each specific area, that's been done by New Zealand artists. Said Penny, um, you know, wherever I can, I've used New Zealanders to to yeah. help. But to get a professional-looking comic book together. I've had to go, I've had to use people from the UK, people from uh, the Philippines and people from Poland, you know. Um, Very and because understandable. It, it's, a, it's, I mean, it's a lot, it's, it looks, look, I mean, I think this stuff is an out of place on, with image on the cover, yeah. you know, the logo. I, you know, I'm really happy with the team and what they've done um, and done our best to be a, a, as inclusive and open as possible to, you know, we've, there's, there's some, Story ideas in there that are quite challenging. There's one character that yeah. he's got a he's got a drug issue, you know, and we don't skate around it. And and I thought long and hard about putting that in, well, and it's it, like because it, it's, it's a like, hard one. Um, it's, like, it's, it's it's a bit it's based like on a friend. Like the drug, um, it's a bit like drink um, the drug uh, the drinking issue with Iron Iron Man alcoholism, right? They didn't skirt yeah. around it either. No, I mean right from the beginning. So. It's how you it's, approach it. So how did you approach this one? Everyone, pretty much all the characters are based on a combination of people I know or, or you know, you, you write what you know sort of thing. And uh, one of the characters was heavily, heavily, his voice was heavily influenced on a guy I know. And I changed it up and, and I, I had him have a drug issue and blah, blah, blah. And my mate didn't have a drug issue. And then I found out this year that it was, yeah, he's, he's in prison now. You know, a guy I went to school with, and I'm furious at him. You know, because I've, I've, I've found out I've been over here ten years. It's real hard to. I don't know the everyday going on about some of my friends and mates back home. Um, and I had, um, I had one it, friend it, who was I, I felt close it to wrong. me. Nice, yeah, I, I, felt I had it, one friend. Uh, friend. Sorry, <laughs> I had one. Yeah, we're talking about each other because of the delay going on. 
So I had one friend who I grew up with and worked with and, you know, hung out with in the 90s, and, no, sorry, late 80s because of our work and stuff. And he hung himself because of meth. I found that out like a couple of months after he had done it. And I searched for him when I moved back to Auckland after coming to Vaughan Film School and then found out from his ex-partner, I mean, girlfriend, that he went to Australia. Yeah. And had been on mess and depression and ended up hanging himself. Yeah. And I was gutted, man. It's not, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I've been there myself. Here's the thing. I don't think we should dance around. I don't think we should dance around. I don't think we should dance around these issues. These, these are things that are happening in our world. So, you know, mm. at the end of the day, you know, it's like, no, we're going to keep this in here and we're going to see. He doesn't mm. have his full redemption story in this book, but there's a path there for mm. him. So, yeah. Yeah, there was some hard. I made some, you know. Ultimately, I thought they were interesting choices, and then they became very personal and they became hard choices. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when you're dealing with like, I mean, I have moments in like, uh, I have moments in weird, uh, like, like because I watch anime a lot, right? So, I have there's moments in anime where I tear up. Hmm? There's been a couple moments where I teared up in anime, right? I'm watching these cartoon characters. Uh, do their thing, uh, it moving, and this is the thing that people don't realize that comics can be as real as any world where experiences we have emotionally. Yeah. And I think this it's, is where they don't realize when they start throwing off at nerds and geeks about, oh, it's, it's just your, oh, why are you so tied up at this? It's just toys. Mm. It's just the cartoon. <laughs> But hey, look, there's, there's, there's shows, people who watch there's people oh. who watch Shortland, Shortland Street for the last 25, 30 years, and I think it's garbage, but, yeah. you know, people love that shit. Yeah. So, you know, and I just, the equate, oh, why do you spend all your money on this comic books? Why do you buy a woman's weekly every week for gossip rags? You know, that actually costs more than a comic book. Yeah. And you throw it out at the end of it, you know? Yeah. Well, this is actually, this, this yeah. thing is actual value to me, and, you know, and it's an ongoing, it's, you know, they're collect, yeah. you know, we're collectors as well. But I think yeah, yeah we're uh, collectors. I, we we hold on to the stuff. Yeah, so you know, I, I, hold, I don't. We hold on to the stuff. I'm probably too close to this land now because of the, the story. I'm, you know, the story's down and done for the last couple of years. I hope there's mm-hmm. moments like that in it. I can't see that anymore because I'm too close to the story. So I hope I hope there's a couple mm-hmm. of moments that people go, oh, oh shit, oh gosh, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, as I evolve as a writer, I'll be able to do more things like that. You know, but, um, yeah, it's been it has been a great journey to be on, and uh, very lucky to have a supportive partner with me as well. And she's she's always pushing me yeah. to go the next step. And yeah, so yeah, it's this land. If you if, if you're on uh, Kickstarter, just go to this land in the search thing, and you'll see the first two campaigns and the third one. Yeah. I'll put it up on the, on on the comments later. So, this is a, there is the other thing of like you're saying, talking about your partner because there is a support base you need for someone like that. I mean, for me, I have my creative friends who do the artwork and stuff, and I can reach out to all these different people. Support mm-hmm. base. Yeah. Now, did you you know because when did you move to to Scotland, or did you move to the UK first and then so, Scotland? <laughs> Yeah, I left New Zealand in 2010. I turned 30. Everyone was getting married, having kids. And I was like, fuck it, I'm out. And then um, went to Canada for a year and lived and worked in Vancouver Island. And then uh, Mm. came over to England. I was in London for two months and then Newcastle for a year. And then moved, yeah, moved around. Yeah. And then I've been nine years in Scotland in this house, longest, longest place I've actually ever lived in one place, which is weird so, to so think how about. Did you, how did you end up in Scotland? I yeah, mean, so okay, hold on. So, yeah. so I've, I've, just one second. So I've realized there's a delay. I didn't realize that for ages. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up a pen just to let you know there's a delay on because we keep talking over each other and we're into this mm. into the more nitty gritty <laughs> stuff, I suppose. So I'll go like this, and then I'll wait a couple of seconds so we can, so I don't end up looking like a fool talking over my guests. Um, all right. So how did you end up in um, Scotland? Right. Um, 
I was indoor snowboarding in uh, Glasgow uh, for a weekend, mm. and uh, I pretty much more or less crashed into this uh, beautiful South African girl, and I heard her accent, and we got talking. And next thing you know, uh, I was uh, driving an hour back and forth to her house every night. And uh, then I just moved in with her and I haven't left. And she's got my passport. <laughs> you overstay it. Well, you overstay well, it in Scotland. Well, well, we need well, to get, like get you kicked out of there. Let, let's call up immigration, you, uh, Scotland. I actually get, I got my UK citizenship two years ago. So, yeah. I would Do you know what's so worth? Do you know what's do you know what's crazy though? We own this house now. I, if I I, yeah. if I couldn't afford to go back to New Zealand, literally couldn't. I know there's housing issues for Africa there, uh, but this oh. this house was cost the equivalent of one hundred and fifty thousand pounds uh, dollars New Zealand. One hundred fifty thousand New Zealand. You wouldn't oh. get that anywhere. You know, there's a three bedroom, big backyard. It's semi detached. I mean, it's Ed attached another to another house. Add another two hundred k. I know, it's nuts. It is nuts. Yeah, it, but I, I, essentially, the town I live in is um, probably like living in Whanganui, Whanganui. Not not Whangarei, but probably Whanganui. What? No, yeah, Whanganui. Whanganui. Whanga. Whanganui. Is Whanganui bigger than Whangarei? Or are you looking back for smaller or bigger? It's smaller. Where was uh, fifty thousand people here? Okay. Yeah, it's smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, there's fifty thousand um, here. So yeah, it's tiny, tiny wee town. So, so how did a African move over <laughs> uh, get it get get to Scotland <laughs> and meet um, a Kiwi of all places? Yeah. You expat. I know, I know. Yeah, it's it's crazy. No, she came over with her mum um, uh, in her early. I think she was in her early 20s or so. So, uh, yeah, that was, it was just funny. Travel halfway around the world and end up with a South African. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But here's, here's what I like about, like, um, one thing, there's a difference. The, the, the life of a comic nerd is very different to... Um, to a life of every other person because looking behind you, looking behind me, we just stand like, I mean, I spend sparsely as much as I can, but we do spend a lot of money on our, on what do we love? Right? Oh yeah. And like you said, you haven't, before, you haven't even was, seen was, the, the soccer and stuff. Wall. You talked about, yeah, you talked about soccer and Arsenal and whatever, you know, you know, uh, my dad's from, my, my dad's from Manchester. So from Coronation Street, two doors down, uh, two streets over. So um, I, I, there is this element of passion that some, you know, some people, the new fans don't understand why there's the three, four decades or five decades, depending on the older or six decades, depending on the older, um, you know, nerds over 40 group that I've, I'm part of, you know, uh, that we, we have this, this love for what we enjoy so much, started from whatever we started from to where we got in here now, that there's a passion and a love and, um, and finding that right partner, as you have, right, who, who backs you in what you're doing, which is the hardest thing in the world, if people don't realize comics is one of the hardest things in the world to get into, unless you're breaking <laughs> your bones to get to do comics, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. how, you know, and, I, and, I, and I've met people from all over the world say the same thing, right? And um, I mean, I've experienced it myself, trying to fund my, my own projects and stuff. But, you know, to have a, you know, to have a, uh, as they say, a good woman behind a, you know, behind a good man <laughs> is a difficult thing, especially in comics. So how did, yeah. ha I mean, how did that happen, man? I mean, you said oh, it, it was like, you crashed into it, but. She's, um, I get. I guess the thing is, uh, I, I'm not out drinking and getting pissed with the boys every week and getting up to trouble. And when I do, I still go out and have a drink. Don't get me wrong, mm. but I'm not a bad. I'm a. I'm a happy. I'm a happy drunk. I guess so. I don't. I don't cause yeah. mischief or mayhem and, and whatnot. Uh, and I think. Uh, I, I think, especially with comics, you, you know, you've got when you create your own and you actually have something tangible, yeah. and you're like, 
yeah. you know, something that you've made. There's something very important about that and i think a lot of people can identify with you know it's been interesting on the old facebook all the friends from all over the world who who have who have backed backed me and gone um Mm. you know and i didn't and they're like oh wow you're doing this i didn't realize you're into that that's really good you know friends who i hadn't spoken to for 15 20 years so yeah jace um the it's People recognise, I think, the effort and the hard work and, and the, 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 you know, the, the ability to create a piece of, yeah, I, I, I dare I say, art. I mean, I guess it is. Anything you create well, is it. art, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think really it was interesting to see the appreci- appreciation across the board. And, um, and Cindy's a creative person as well. So she, you know, she, she's we've basically we, we built an extension on the back of the house and it's basically a big cra- it's half tv room half craft room so you know it, it's we're always making and creating and trying to create our own thing you know uh, it'd be great if we could make make some money out of it but at the end of the day you know right. the, the, the just the art just the act of creating keeps someone it it keeps something in you going you know and 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 i think people recognize that you know so um and that's that's the end result of it i mean that's the good um not the end result but that's um what is it It's, it's it's a reward right that's the reward of all your hard work Absolutely. And um, seeing people, Absolutely. seeing people appreciate and acknowledge your hard work, and I mean, sure, you, you know, I mean, like you have book right, novel writers who spent three years writing just one single book, you know, and you, and then people go, yeah, he's a writer, yeah, you know, or you have a filmmaker and who spent three, three years bringing a movie to pass, and yeah, he is a, and then you have a comic book writer, oh, he spent a two, three years doing this, oh. It's just a comic. You know, it's like, like you said, we were talking about well building before. It's like the years that go into trying to work out all the ins and, you know, ins and outs of why they do what they do. And, the, you know, and, and, and the other thing I want to talk about we haven't talked about is the self-censorship on what we bring out. Because I, I really, uh, as, a, as a creator, I really like to discuss that because I think what people see on the page is not exactly sometimes what we want to put out or we do put out, but we always think more of it. Yeah, I think um, I think it's the same for a lot of things, uh, what your ultimate goals and, and what emotions and stuff you want to put across. There's always someone who'll take it their own way with their own with their own viewpoint, you know, and that's that's any story, any conversation, you know, why is character X doing this? Like, I, I I think you might even see by issue four, people who have read one, two, and three, people may have have attachment to these characters and say, they wouldn't do that. It's like, I just hang on. It's only four issues old. Yeah. People do form emotional yeah. and uh, attachments and ideals of what the, out of their beliefs to uh, fictional characters, yeah. you know? Uh, and yeah. that's where, you know, you get passionate fandoms, you know? this character isn't like how it used to be or how it was when I was 12, 12 years old seems to be the magic number for a lot of things. So most people yeah. uh, idealized version of Batman might be you know, guys. My age would be movie Batman, 89 Batman, you know, that or animated Batman. That's their idealized version of that character. Um, yeah. When you have new people giving voices to different, the same character from different generations, they mm. may uh, your mindset may not mm. accept that they on that's not the voice i recognize but through mm. a mix of other medias and other perceptions and people's up up uh bringings and and what the what information has formed them they may see mm. the same character at the same point of time as you as being completely different in their in their space mm. so it, I'm sure at some point, hopefully, you know, there will be people out there who will have their own fandom ownership 
over these characters we've created and their own ideas of what these characters could and should be. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it's it's important to note that everything evolves uh, to, and um, especially with comic books, what, what what's interesting, like, so Wol old man Logan Wolverine died and he came back with hot claws or whatever. Yeah. Wolverine's always going to be around. Yeah. Just chill out for a year or two. Don't worry. He'll come back to Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to play this game? You want to play this game? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, you, you brought it up. You brought it all, man, Logan. But, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it reminds me of uh, what, uh, what um, it reminds me what Frank Miller said to Tom King of, of when he was doing a panel, when he was doing a panel with, um, about Batman. I think it was 80 years of Batman, he did a panel, and he said to Tom King, you don't know Batman. And I was yeah. like, you're right, Frank. You're absolutely right. This guy doesn't know Frank. This this man doesn't know Batman. And I've never read. I stopped reading Batman because of Tom King. Yeah, because he and, doesn't know uh, Batman. Yeah. At, at the same time, there were a group of people who very much did enjoy his his book. Hmm. Uh, it, it was Tom King yeah. is a, a very process orientated guy. He's very uh, everything yeah. he does is very structural. Um, you know, yeah. some, he's got some great single issue stories. Uh, he's not as black and white with stuff as Frank Miller is with his Batman. Um, but Batman, eventually, so you've got James the III, or uh, I think his name is, he's on Batman now. Yeah, and a lot, of have, have, a lot of people have come back onto it because of that. Um, it's not I, worth getting. It's not worth getting the pitchforks out if someone writes your character a certain way. Hey, Barker, yes. got a sharp A here. Mm. Up you come. Come on, yep. come on. <laughs> so. All right. So, so in finishing, we we've gone over two hours. We're supposed to like go for an hour and a half, but I enjoyed enjoyed talking to you about what's going on. And uh, I mean, it's it's just it's it's really cool to talk with fellow creators i really enjoy that i think the process and discussion of how you get to where you are now because that that whole background of years of reading a comic and learning and then going through and finding out how how to do it and then trying to do it and then learning more to do it i mean even now i mean like i've been you know i'm still learning myself yeah to make yeah. sure that what i'm Everyone doing is going to work the, the best thing I would say to anyone is take your favorite comic book and reverse engineer it. So look at a page, and then if you, if you want to be a writer, look at a page from Watchmen, let's say, and just, and describe and break down how, how that page came into be, you know. Um, and then, then you'll actually understand. It's not like, you know, yeah, Alan Moore's descriptions <laughs> in there are insane. So... Oh yeah, I mean yeah. that that whole issue is a well, raw edge, you know. <laughs> yep, look at it, look at it all. It doesn't have to be that detailed, but that is some insane yeah. detail level of detail, and that's just the way he writes, you know. And and the more information, and it doesn't have to be that way. It, no, no. Listen, it's comics are a collaboration, yeah. right? So mm. ultimately, as, as a writer, you do have a viewpoint and, a, and an idea you want to be seen. Um, you could be specific about angles and uh, I want a mid shot, I want a tight shot, I want a wide shot, you know. But the best thing, I, the one thing I put at the top of every uh, script that I send out there is say, this is a guideline. If you have a better way of doing it, let's talk about it. Yeah. And 99% yeah. of the time, uh, the artists usually do. I, I, I did yeah. uh, a media arts degree and, and did photography and film and all that sort of stuff as well. And um, yeah. I, I do have my own very specific viewpoint of how panels should be. Um, mm. And every time um, PR, the artist, came back to me and said, hey, should we try this? Usually worked out for the better or, you know, very rarely said no to actually change that to that or anything like that. For, for 140 pages, there were very few changes in what we did, you know, 
And mm -hmm. thumb thumbnailing, thumbnailing is key to any artist out there. Yeah. You, you know, the more time you can spend getting your thumbnails right and your layouts, mm. get that done. That'll save you a fortune in the long run and, and making space for web balloons. Because <laughs> otherwise you'll Always be drawing, on, drawing on stuff yeah. that'll get co covered. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, that's that's yeah. A, that's the thing about um um you know I have a <laughs> for for being a writer on different different projects right because we I do from strips to um no text um I mean no art um strips to full on you know panels and stuff I um I have an idea and because I come from a background of film wide shot like you were saying wide shot establishing shot mid shot close yeah. up uh yeah. and all that an extreme close up right over here on the eyes sort of thing you, you know but you leave it up to the like you said you leave it up to artists because mm -hmm. that's all what they what their talent is your talent is it, well your skill is that mm -hmm. writing and you're trying to tell the artist to do whatever you can in that panel and some panels mm -hmm. can either kill or break the comet because or, or the yeah. page i should say if it's yep. not done right so yeah you so there's a, there's a couple of panels uh double splash pages where there's a lot of detail and i went as far as saying look i'm going to give you a three page pay rate for these two pages because mm -hmm. i know it's going to take you more time because we want to spend the extra time getting this right you know so there's things like mm -hmm. that i mean we're not we're not marvel and dc we're not printing money out but if, if, if it's a key element of the story like the introduction to the white tomb for example uh, I wanted to show that this wasn't just a barren place under the under the earth, and you know he, he went and did it, like there's a lot of detail in that page uh, there. So you know I said yeah, go for it. So there's a few pages like that. There's a, there's a you can't quite see it there, but there's a lot in the background that you can't quite see. So yeah, it's it's important if you need to spend more time on it. And it's a hard thing because you know we're not professionals, but artists spend far more time on these on this journey yeah. than we do um you know if you can reward them for that extra effort it's the right thing to do yeah. it's, it's it's tough you know it's you know, yeah but uh I, th I think um the other and the, when you're collaborating it's like to make sure that your uh your artist understands as much as possible but also willing to go back and forth with you on because here's what one of my one of my artist friends said to me i know what you i mean i know you have everything worked out in your head but you need to tell me what the f is going on because i don't yeah. know what is yeah, going yeah. on in your head you know so, it's like it's like who are these characters and what do they look like and why do i have to do this and what what is yeah. where are they you know what is all this thing going on there's a there's a specific example and um I've got a couple of things in issue one that pay off in issue four. And I need you to explain, and it probably is in the, the director's cut. Actually, I should go back and check those scripts and see if uh, those director cut, um, if I've blocked out those things. Oh, bucker. Sorry, I'm just going to get rid of this pup. Out, go. Yep. Oh, you bastard. Oh, he's walking all over shit. <laughs> ah. I'm trying to sell those comics and he's walking <laughs> on them. Um, so, well, it should be on the floor, first of all. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> It's a bit of a mess here. Go away. Go. Yeah. <laughs> you should see my my space. Here, have a look at this. Have a look. At this. All right. Like that is me. Yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll, all I'll, over. Yeah. I just put in um, four four IKEA dealt uh, cupboards the other day just to stack stuff on because nice. I was just running out of space. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's important it's, that you know. <laughs> It's important with, uh, like you say, any anything you describe, it's like if there's a gun on the wall, if you specifically say there's a gun on the wall and he draws that gun, that gun should probably be used at some point in the book, you know, otherwise you just wait, you, you're pretty much wasting the artist's time, but there needs to be, oh, he's actually a hunter, that's a refer reference to the gun that the guy's an actual hunter or something like that. So there's no point adding elements to the artist's job that doesn't inform the story, you know. Mm. So yeah, there's a, there's a couple of little tidbits in issue one that pay off later down the road, and uh, yeah, 
things I can't talk about just yet. So, yeah, which is good. Yeah. And hopefully I will have that opportunity. All right. It's all done. Uh, yeah. But uh, thank you so much for having me on, mate. It's been really good. Awesome. So in closing, um, I'm going to let you finish off. So we've got about two and a half minutes and we've had you for two and a half hours and I'm very appreciative. I'm really am, Mark. I, um, and um, I, I, all the best. And I'm really keen to get some, get my hands on this book. And if not for the trade paperback, because I'm really, I like the entire thing because I, so I can sit down and read for the entire thing. So yep. please give us your final words for the last two minutes and then we'll close off. So, yeah, This Land, uh, Kickstarter for issue three coming out August 15th. Just go to Kickstarter and type in This Land. Uh, for if You can try and get a copy from Mark 1 Comics in Hamilton. But uh, essentially, it's uh, what if you had the power of the gods and what if the gods wanted that power back? Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I, was so, trying, yeah. I was trying to get... I was trying to put you on on by yourself, my bad. <laughs> Carry right. on. So yeah, the, the 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 yeah the 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 elevator pitch is: what if you had the power of the gods, and what if those gods wanted that power back? And uh, yeah, it's um it's it's been really great getting this book out there, and uh, I need everyone's support each Kickstarter so we can get to the end of the road, and maybe by Christmas next year we might have a uh, a hardcover oh, hardcover that'll be a dream oh can you imagine that but um or a graphic novel so yeah um and if there are other kiwis out there i've i've got a couple of uh, spots for issue five um for pinups but that won't happen for a few months now so always looking to work with kiwi artists to get you know give give people uh, a bit of exposure as well so it's not work for exposure they get paid for the pinups but these this it's been going yeah, on thing is like, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody talks like exposure, exposure, but like you gotta pay the artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. Awesome. But yeah. But thank you All so right. much, mate. Um, yeah. thank you, Mark. And um for everyone watching, thank you for joining us in um joining us here and on the narrative. Um Kakite Ano, be well wherever you are. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. From live from Scotland. Um I know we talked over each other a couple of times and it's because of delay and I didn't realize until later on. So thank you so much. I'm going to do this weekly, every week. And next week we have, we have Quadzilla and the week after we have Pop Daddy. And we've got this month covered. And then thank you so much. I'm really, I, I love this journey that we're all on around the world on uh, being able to communicate it to each other around just, you know, via the internet. And I think it's uh, great for I guess in a way it's self-promotion, but not only that, but because of the other side of that, which is like showing what we are creating to, to the world. And uh, as yep. Kiwis, it's, it's nothing better than saying, we're from a little town down, you know, down, down under here in Middle Earth, and we have something to offer. And not just sport, not just all blacks, but we have comments as well to offer. And thank you so much, Mark. Takitono, everybody again, and be well wherever you are. Thank you so much. Bye.